Yeah, get it on. Got oh, to get it on. Boy. No choice but to get on. Man, did you get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. Matthew Lillard is in yes. studio. Good to see Matthew. I just want to have sex with that man's voice. Is that? <laughs> can you do that? I mean, jeez, I'm get looking him at him, and he looks like... I mean, he well, just looks like a rock star done, from the 80s. But when you narrow it down to the voice, then it sounds like a location as well. Mm. Meaning a type of sex that you'd like to have. I'm not against him. I'm not against him either. A real piece of ass, uh, Matthew. <laughs> of course, you know as an actor, as now entrepreneur. But just in case you forgot, Scream and Scooby Doo, Serial Mom, and uh, The Descendants, which was Great a movie. quiet, nice movie. Great movie that I, I was interested to see you pop up in because I, you know, people are used to seeing you from the teen movies and that kind of yeah. stuff. So that that was a really nice role for you. And his next role, his biggest role, is as an entrepreneur. Quest and Paladin, which is the whiskey, and uh, it'll be available tomorrow as you hear this. Questandwhiskey.com is where you go. And it's, uh, it's limited already in knocking out of the ballpark. I know you're excited. Very, it's been a very big morning. Very exciting morning. <laughs> Yeah, because you guys went live. Yeah, right? we went live on a pre-sale, um, and it's that thing where you're watching and you just don't know how it's going to go. And we launched at nine a.m. this morning Pacific time, and and we are well on our way to a successful launch of a company. So it's exciting. I think this is an uncornered market too. It's 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 a, like a it's named after Dungeons and Dragons, right? Yeah, I mean, our whole idea is like, look, we. You know, I was building. I have this company called Beetle and Grimm's, mm -hmm. and we build high end box editions of Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, uh, look at mm -hmm. there it is. There, those, there's the bottle. Mm -hmm. So, we build these high end editions of Dungeons and Dragons and Critical Role and Pathfinder. And so, I was having success in that business with my partners. All four of my partners have left their careers and now work full time for Beetle and Grimm's. And we found, we discovered that building luxury goods for like communities. Um, really made sense. People that have disposable income will come out and and purchase things to celebrate the things they love. Mm -hmm. And so our, one of my other partners saw what I was doing and what his other friend was doing, this guy named Tim Sparapani, who runs a whiskey company called Blue Run. Blue Run just sold for a lot of money to Coors, Molson Coors. Um, and you know, to my partner, his name's Justin Ware, uh, he's like, what if we combine those two things? What if we combined high-end premium whiskey with like fandoms, and that's what we're doing. How is Dungeons and Dragons going in this modern era? Twenty-two billion dollar a year industry. Really? Yeah. Not just Dungeons and Dragons because we're not associated with Dungeons and Dragons, but the RPG community right. is twenty-two billion dollars worldwide. Rocket propelled grenades are that kind of no, no. Role play, role play, role games. playing games, role playing oh. games. Yeah. See, I'm I'm <laughs> straight, and I played a little high school ball. So well, when I hear yeah, RPG, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think rocket propelled grenade. Yeah, How yeah. much do you know about Dungeons and Dragons, Adam? I don't know anything. I made a a, a weird decision. I mean, maybe we can we can maybe we can suss this out with Matthew's help. Um, I grew up not knowing how to read until mm. I didn't really learn how to read until I was maybe 30. So reading, I never associated with pleasure. So when people do the, you got to check out Lord of the Rings and stuff, I'd be like, I don't want Lord of the Rings. Let's go to the park and play on the rings and like hang off a ring and then we'll beat each other with a mop handle and we'll see who stays on the longest. Like my life was so tactile and physical sure. that I, the idea of sitting indoors and playing a board game or reading a book or, or even comic books, GI Joes, none of it. It was all find a roof, find a swimming pool that you think maybe you could make from the roof, but maybe not. And that's, that's, that's the rub. That's maybe, the game. Yeah. Maybe not. You may catch some patio and then just go out there and do it. And so I had a kind of, almost rejection of all things that were bored or reading or comics or superheroes or any of it. It was sure. all just wrestling and BMX bikes. violence. It was all Different violence. forms of violence. <laughs> yeah. Like when you see those commercials that talk about toxic masculinity. Yeah. That's all I did. <laughs> Everything I did fell under the heading we of toxic. We were different creatures, totally different creatures. How did you grow up? Uh, so I grew up 
in uh, Detroit, Michigan. We moved to Orange County, California. And we were we would leave the house at 8 a.m. on the summer day yes. and would not come back until 10 o'clock at night. But we would play football. We would play war. We would, you know, we would build tank dioramas in the back and, yeah. and build out games like that. But then at some point, we would add this element of Dungeons and Dragons, or we would add an element of making movies on Super 8 film. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was all led by this guy named David Larson, who's out there. He's still he's still in Orange County. Um, and I and listen and I and I did that as a kid and to me like playing Dungeons and Dragons early on was really about buying a lead figure Mm because they used to make these little lead figures. Yep. And then we would we'd paint them individually, paint them. Yeah. And then we would play the game for a week. Then we'd go off and play other things and come back and start another campaign. And so we'd get on our bikes. We would ride way too far (laughs) to buy another series of lead paints or lead figures. And then paint them again and sort of go through that whole cycle. And that's how I played Dungeons & Dragons. It's really about, you know, and listen, D&D is about, it's sitting around a table and telling a story, right? And as a kid, it was really about, like, how powerful can I get? How many dragons can I murder? Like, it was still, (laughs) there was still violence. It was just sedentary violence. Yeah. So RPG means something different to me, and Double yep. D means something different to me, <laughs> that I, too. I think that Double D means the same to pretty <laughs> much everyone. <laughs> All right. I'm just putting it through my filter. You know, you kids today have no idea of the simple majesty of walking into an old-timey hobby store. Mm. You order all your shit on Amazon, some guy drops it off on your porch, Mm -hmm. it's all shit out in China, Bezos adds another 10 feet to his yacht. You have no idea (laughs) that pilgrimage to the hobby store where you'd walk in and it had a smell. Oh. The hobby store had a smell. The Schwinn shop had a smell. Like and the bookstores had a smell. Like bike stores still bike have stores, that smell. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, it's, it's vulcanized that, rubber. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, the tears of the guy who quit their job and started his business selling mountain bikes that isn't working. But the different the 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 thrift store had a smell. It was kind of the smell of, of failure. It, the thrift store smelled a little like mildew and a little like death. Uh, the army surplus store had a smell. The Schwinn shop, the bike store had a smell. Yeah. And the hobby store had a smell. And it was all aspirational. You would just go in there and look at shit. You could buy the little testers paint. Yeah, yeah. You could buy the little figurines. But at some point, there was a remote control panzer tank from World War II. And you just looked at it. No, oh, yeah. you weren't getting near that. They wouldn't even pull it out. If if you told them pull it out of the case, I want to check it out. They'd go take your eleven year old broke ass out of my fucking store. And rockets, you you you'd go in and like there'd be all those rockets lined up with oh, different with different engines. Testers, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. it was called Testers rockets. Rockets were they? I don't look, remember. You got to look up Testers rockets. Rocketry was a thing. Oh, yeah. You would build your own rocket. You'd have your own launch thing. You'd have to buy the little time. The, the battery. Fuse. Remember the battery? And yeah. You'd, and then you'd have that long shaft of, of steel yep. that you would load it. You'd load your rocket on. And, and then you'd pack the, you'd pack the, um, the uh, wadding. parachute the, and the yep, wadding. The wadding, the parachute. And then it would go 350 feet in the Shh. air. And then the chute would deploy. And then it would start drifting. (laughs) And then you would, everyone would look up at it and run after it across. Jump on your bike. Across busy streets, everywhere. No safety at all. No helmets, no nothing. Just head up in the air, driving into oncoming traffic, (laughs) looking for your your rocket. Is it testers? No, that's the water one. That's, oh. I think that's the water one. Don't that's show us that pussy water one. Yeah, we need that's the ones not, with that's the, not what we want. the engines. That were, you put in the, you put it, you actually use. They're the, probably. In, like, a D, like a D engine was the big one. They're probably outlawed in California No, I now. just did one. Uh, I did one five years ago. You did? Yeah, yeah. I built one five years ago. I was on a, we were on a family trip and we all went out. We, we bought with a couple families. Every family bought their own their own uh, rocket, and we made them, and we launched them. The thing about the engines is they kind of look like M80s, 
But when you fired them, it would all just fire out of out of one oh, side, yeah, yeah. and the rocket would go, and it had a glorious sound <laughs> so to it. Good. And that smell of sulfur. Sulfur, oh, yeah. nothing better than yeah. the sulfur smell. So you kids ordering everything online, you're missing you're missing out on the simple pleasure of riding your bike to the hobby store. And those stores are still around. You can find them. Don't give up. Toys R Us is coming back. They no, just, they just announced they're, they're opening like 24 flagship stores next year. Oh really? They're that's going, good. Yeah, they're going back to brick and mortar. I think that's good. Yeah, because you go, you want to go in there, you want to look at the toys, you want to feel that's them, the feel best. the heft. Also, I don't know how they're doing uh, in the uh, mob looting department, Toys R Us, <laughs> but I don't see them popping up. Well, they don't. They don't. They they they're filed not... for bankruptcy. There's no more Toys R Uses. Oh, yeah, like as, so we have to wait. Seventeen. So, yeah, so we'll have to wait and see the the mobs of. Children. Yes, yes, there's the uh, rocket it. set. That's not it That's either, not but that looks like a model. That is Maybe. testers, though. That is testers, but I don't think testers is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> all that being said. All right, I got some questions. Okay. Uh, Aquarius, next question. Oh, man. I'm going to turn the page. I had this. <laughs> uh, tell me if you ever had this, because you do a lot of press, right? Yeah. And you do those tours. I did a radio tour sure. this morning. The this morning you did? Yeah, the radio tour was a bitch because it went from 6 a.m. to about 8.15 this morning. And my goddamn dog woke me up two times last night to go downstairs and be let out. He always goes right through the night, but he knows on the early call days, wakes me up at 2 a.m., needs to go outside, then... Uh, Wakes me up at 4 a.m. Needs to go outside. So so I'm I'm shot. And I don't I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but I become married or addicted to my white noise sound maker on oh. my phone. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's yeah. the sound of the rain or the my rain kids, My kids have that. I go I'm going to bed last night. Yeah, I got the alarm set for six hours and twenty minutes or something like that. Set the thing, doesn't work. Needs to be like rebooted, redo the app, whatever it is. I'm not capable of doing it, and it ain't working. And now it's just me and Phil, the dog, sawing logs. But he wakes me up twice. I got no, I got no white noise pump in, so it was a rough night. And then you start with the radio show tour. Some interviewers are better than others. Sure, I would say. Sure, you know, and. Uh, <laughs> they've but there's, gotta be, but they don't they prepare for you. I mean, you're, you're they they the, do they. Not, I mean, some some do more than others. Yeah. But the one guy goes. <laughs> but I, I like. I don't know if you've experienced this phenomenon. But somebody brings something up, and then you bring it up back to them, and then they act like you're just making it out of whole cloth. Like I, whatever, dude. Like this guy goes to me. I, I wrote it down. He goes, "Where are you at?" He says, "Off the air," and I go. I'm in Los Angeles, and he goes, I got to ask, because otherwise, you know, people say I'm in Uruguay. And I go, yep, everyone says Uruguay. <laughs> and he pauses, and he goes, uh, whatever. Like, I'm like, I, I'm just making your joke. No. I'm, I'm making your joke, weirdo. Yeah. I didn't fucking pull that out of my ass at 6.09 in the morning. Don't make me the weird conversationalist. I'm embellishing your half-baked comment. You acted like I just... The yes and, my friend. Yes, yes go to and. the groundlings. Yeah. I didn't just pull you out of the shower randomly and start talking about Uruguay. I, I'm yes, using... You, you did that. You I'm did using that your you. thing. Yeah. That's your thing. He wasn't ready for it. No. Not ready for it. The other thing i wanted to uh broach was um i don't know if you guys are with me but i i like i like things to be standardized um i just want certain things to mean certain things because people are too distracted they're plowing through life they're staring at their phone and they just can't figure it out like any door that you push should just have a push plate on it in a commercial and if there's a handle that's a pull and we don't need we'll never need to talk about it again. That's that's just it. It can't be a handle that you try to pull and you realize you have to push it. You know, just just stand. Like we have stoplights. You know, red means everyone stop. Everyone should understand. Everyone should services. understand. And I've This goes back to your construction days. It, it's it's that's all it is. All it is is sort of protocol in construction. You in and, and, and you learn to think in a linear fashion. You just 
You don't change a blade on a skill saw, a high point saw. You don't change a blade without unplugging it. You just unplug the saw, then you change the blade, then you plug it back in. That's just what you do. Logic. It's, it's, it's protocol, standard procedure. I've noticed that we get, got away from the tactile world. We're in the digital world, and that's why people keep fucking up, because they don't really have the tactile world's protocols and procedures. But over here, I mean, I implemented my bathroom strategy at this workplace years and years ago, and it is goddamn flawless. Can we review that strategy? Yeah. Because I did not get the notes coming in. We can. I made a video, Dawson can find. <laughs> for, I think it was college humor. It was, it was or funny. cracked, I think. Was it cracked? cracked? Or it was one of the two, college humor cracked. I think it was college humor where I just sort of laid it out. But all right, it's very simple. Door closed yeah. and latched. Not doesn't have to be locked, but just shut. Someone's in there. If the door's closed, somebody's in that room. Copy that. That's it. No further arguments. No jiggling with the handle. No, excuse me. I'm here. No, no, nothing. No weird exchanges. Just door shut. Someone's in there. Door wide open. It's all yours. It's all yours. Permission to ask a question. Yeah. What if somebody has Mm. had a rough morning and Mm -hmm. leaves... Uh, le- residual element of yeah. Well, that's what uh, I'm getting to. Oh, I screwed up. I <laughs> there's didn't one more. I didn't, oh, there's one more. Oh, I thought just... that was open and closed. I didn't know there could be another. Oh, there's a third. Oh, there's a third. My bad. Okay, my bad. <laughs> All the way closed. Keep walking. Go find another bathroom. Open. Waltz in. Uh, a jar. Open two three inches. With the fart fan running. Enter at your own risk. Oh, see, I, pr- yeah, I jumped. Brace for impact. I, oh, yeah, yeah. And right. Only and, new, only need if necessary. And it's flawless, right? I mean, nobody gets We've caught. No, no one here. gets hung out here. There's people buzzing in and out here all day. No one's jiggling the door. No one's talking I, I through the door. I can use the, the bathroom. I don't have to lock it, and I have zero anxiety. Do not have to lock it. <laughs> I would not do that. <laughs> I, because I could show up and immediately catch you in the middle. You poop. could. But, but when you know it's just the home team, you go in that bathroom, don't lock it. Rub one out, do rails, oh do whatever God. you Come want. On. Do whatever don't, you don't want. Don't do that in the workspace. Yeah. I, but Matthew I'm saying. Really walked in on me too. I mean, that's That's okay. a plus. Yeah. <laughs> Rubbing one out <laughs> as you do rails. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a nice break. No bueno. So, all right. Now, I, I like to go through life this way because it streamlines everything. It simplifies everything. No one gets caught walking into the shit show. Literally, no one gets embarrassed on the pot. And it's just one less thing to ever give any thought to. I now would like to extend this to the TV remote. Mm. I have two TV remotes. I got like the power one and like the Apple, whatever. And whenever the maid comes, I got to find them because she cleans. She puts them away. You know, she puts them in the basket and the thing underneath they the thing on the second. <laughs> I, uh, the one, the one in the bedroom always goes into the nightstand drawer. Mm. But you have to look around. Is it you? You, you fluff out the comforter. Is it, is it on the bed? Never put away. You go to the hotel. Yeah, I don't know where the remote is. I see the TV. Is it in the nightstand drawer? Is it in the drawer? Sometimes they just put it in the bureau underneath the TV set, like close as you. Never put away a remote. Never. It's if it's in the bedroom or at the hotel, it's on the goddamn nightstand. That's it. Every right. time. Like and if it's your house and the maid comes over, don't tidy up remotes. We don't need to tidy. It's sitting on a coffee table. It's facing the TV set. We don't need to put it away. I know you're here to clean. <laughs> By all means, clean. Go find another toilet. This doesn't need straightening up. It doesn't need rearranging. It doesn't need anything. And it's not like I'm going to sit home and go, I'm glad she put it away because I'm not going to watch TV for a few weeks. No, I'm addicted to the TV set and I have to get over and start going through the baskets to find out which basket it ended up. This never put away TV remote. And if I walk into a hotel room and I don't see a TV remote sitting on the nightstand, I'm going to assume there is no TV remote in this room. I'm going right back downstairs. I'm not, I'm not going to start opening drawers like an insane person. TV remote etiquette. Now you can disagree, or you can embellish. No, I think it's nightstand. Yeah, yeah. nights. If there's a bed involved, it'll be on the nightstand. Yeah. If there's uh, a living room involved, it will be on the coffee table. That's it. That's it. 
No more looking. I don't think you can argue. I, who could argue with that? I don't think. Everybody would want that. I mean, that seems like basic humanity. <laughs> That's right? what I'm saying. But it's not implemented. It's not implemented. It's every time I go into a hotel room, I have to look around to see where it is. God, if I was your friend, I would hide that shit every, <laughs> every day. I literally oh. would go in and just tuck it into like your mail. <laughs> I'd put it oh. under like the pillow. I had a, uh, I think we have that college humor. I think it's based on my first book I wrote like, 12, 14 years ago or something Do you like still that. write? For, my, yeah. for a man who didn't read is not writing books. That's a journey. Yeah, right? I've written six books. New York I think. Times best-selling author. Oh, yeah. There you go. Let's see. With these rules or is... Again, I say it's common decency. It's <laughs> I, just good human... I agree, but we can't count on common decency anymore. No, that That's, is true. We, no, those we've are, jumped the shark as a true. society. The using the shoe... To flush is still a big thing. I see that ever. I see. I've seen people do that on the crosswalk. Like, I, so, oh, they yeah. use it to open. Oh, that's the warning. This oh. is the national warning. Oh, yeah. yeah, they said it was gonna. Yeah, they told me that today. They said. Uh, yeah, that's the. And then I was national asked. wireless emergency alert system. I feel so. I alerted. I, I was um, also now thinking about when I got my hair cut and the lady said her crazy brother-in-law told her don't answer the phone the government was going to blow Five. up the chip that was in your head I maybe he was connecting it to this well I repeat the brothers yeah they, uh, that I mean that's been going around that this is the end of days this alarm is yeah. it and the fi they're implementing the 5G self-destruction my phone's on silent and that just yeah, yeah wow yeah, yeah. so there you go. All right. Another another thought for you, Matthew Lillard. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Interesting. I'm here to receive. I am I'm I'm just curious uh what you think. <laughs> well, you know what? Actually, I think we'll take a I think we'll take a quick break because I, I have some questions for you. I don't want to filibust there. I got questions for Matthew Lillard. I, and we'll, well work I, some I, of the stuff okay, in we'll too. We'll take a break, but I'm interested in, in hearing your <laughs> well, I'll float. I'll float it out. Oh, good. Okay. Um, I was talking to Doctor Drew, and I was God saying uh, Dr. Drew. everyone loves Doctor Drew, and I was saying women frequently don't know where stuff is, and I blame the purse. All women are, are constantly checking, like, "Where's that key fob? Where's that thing? Where's that? It's in my. Is it in my purse?" And then oh, they start man. unzipping everything, and they're pulling stuff out of their purse. And dudes, it's on our person, or it's not. Like you can't leave. Like I can't walk out of here without my cell phone or keys. I I, mm. I can't do keys because they're, they're not on me. I, I would know if they were in your front right. pocket, you, you know, your key rings in there, whatever, sunglasses, even a designated pocket, whatever. Yeah. Women are constantly going, I think, I don't know if I left my keys or my whatever. And then they check their purse because they think they put it in their purse. Sometimes they did. Sometimes they didn't. I've, I've, the, the downfall of, of men has been the backpack. I travel with the backpack and it's constantly, where's that done? I'm unzipping mm. every Guilty. pocket. When I leave, when I leave the house, I'm brimming with confidence for this trip. You know, I go, oh, I just got some cash. I'll just put it in the backpack. And then at some point, I'm where I'm supposed to be and some other faraway land. I'm like, did I bring cash? Where's that cat? And then I start unzipping yeah. and then emptying, dumping everything out because I use the big hopper for pens, cash, keys, notepads. It all ends up in the big thing. And then I'm like an idiot. I'm, I'm <laughs> doing a raccoon in a dumpster, just tearing away at stuff. But I think the purse has hurt women. I think I think there's a I think it's the cause of a lot of what did I do with my keys? What did I do the key card to get in the building? I think it's in my purse, but I don't know if I left it at home. But you would know if you left it home because it wouldn't be on you. You know, it would be on you, and you it would, would be know. In, or, yeah, one you, of your forward pockets. Right. Then Drew said something interesting. I said, you know, I think the purse is something for them to hang on to. Like they like the feeling of it. This they feel. Like, they're not whole without the purse. And then um, he said, when he used to do the elderly, when he walked through the old age homes, they would 
in the super elderly women, they would give them dolls. They like to hang on to dolls. They like to like walk mm. around with the dolls and hold the dolls. Like, and he said they would even be crazy with their purse, like in the home. Mm. You know, like where I don't know where you're going, but that that purse and the doll, like they need to physically tote something. Like the purse has mm. become more than a place to keep junk. It's a part of them. It's now. like a, it's like a yeah. part of them, and they hand it's out ma- dolls to elderly instinct. Elderly, not yeah. Barbie dolls either, like like yeah. stuffed infant dolls. Is it maternal or is it like the same way a kid has his blankie? That's what I said. I said it's like they're they're huggy bookie. It's like they're they're stuffy. <laughs> <laughs> they're the purse is a huggy bookie that you can walk through society with judgment free into yeah. your seventies. You know what I mean? No one judge I can't yeah. drag my huggy bookie around as much as you know, I'd like to. That well, my dad my dad has dementia, which is not fun to talk about, but he has a stuffed animal. He has a stuffed dog. Mm-hmm. You know, and I he carries that thing with him all the time. Really? A hundred percent. He loves it. And then, you know, you'll get a ball. Like, I'll, I'll take a ball and we'll play, like, you know, I'll throw the ball, like a Nerf ball to him. He'll play catch for like two hours. Mm. Like, you know, bounce it to him. It's not yeah. like he's not going down for, you know, down and out. <laughs> Cola. Right. But, you know, you're like, you know, you'll bounce it to him. And yeah. he he loves to ca- He'll love to catch. He'll love to throw it back. He loves throwing it fast. He'll love to, like, sneakily throw it at you. It's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, he can't say his name. Is he, um, is he in a, a, he's a, in a facility? A facility? Yeah. No, yeah. So is that a thing where guys get stuffed animals and yeah. girls or women get dolls? Yeah, I think I think that it makes... I mean, listen, for my dad, um, it's something that he can hold on to and care about. I mean, it, I, I, there's no words to it, right? Because you can't, he can't communicate at this point. Um, but it's comf- there's something comforting about it. So the purse is what you use to get you through until you go to the elderly home and get the doll assigned <laughs> yeah, to you. Yeah, you start with the bun bun. You start with the blanket. Mm-hmm. You move to the purse. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you complete with... Uh, <laughs> and hopefully, ladies, you, you have a good long purse run. Yeah. You know, I hope you have a yeah. purse from like 14 to 85. You know, that's a good What good do you think about the run. guys carrying the uh, the fanny packs? Oh, that's a new thing, yeah. The over the shoulder yeah, yeah, fanny yeah. pack, yeah, like the crossbody one. And right? then I listen, tread carefully because I I may have one on. Oh, <laughs> I did the D and D math a while ago with you and your man purse. Literally. I gave Adam a fanny pack for Christmas. Did you wear so he, it? So did he you could do it? Did you ever try it? I, no, I'm. I, but but there's something that people should understand about me. I am insanely jealous of people who are organized that way. Oh. They got their water bottle clipped on. They got their backpack. Like they know where everything is. They got their bandolero belt, man purse, you know, over your shoulder. It's basically like saying, I'm not comfortable with the fanny pack, but if I invert it yeah, and face totally. it in a different direction, <laughs> then all of a sudden I'm an elite fraternity. It's so funny. I, do you, well, when you were doing construction, did you have a full belt? Oh, or were the you bags. the guy that had. No, the. the, the you I was, didn't? I was That's no, the best no, part. I mean, yes, yes. No, the, the, the best. I was just thinking about this the other day. The, the one of the most satisfying things I ever did was when you put the bags on. Sure. And you look like a total nerd when you're wearing brand new bags. They're oh, shiny, yeah. they're mm. stiff. It's like a baseball sure, mitt. Yeah, yeah. First game of the season, you know. They start getting worked in and they can kind of tell a story and then other guys have little things because everyone's bags are a little bit different. Sure. Some guys, oh, I got my speed square, I keep it in the back. Oh, I keep my uh, hip, my hip valve square in the side. Or I, the coolest guys are the guys who have, I'm going to have to look these up, but they're these little brass, they're little brass clamp things with a slit in them. And they're for putting on a, constructions a framing square big square and you put these two brass stops on them and they're for laying out treads and risers for doing stair stringers you know what i mean like a guy does stair stringers you go okay that guy's a real carpenter because it's it's a lot of math like you gotta you know the floor is here and the landing is nine foot four inches and you gotta make 
a perfect an even, rise yeah. all the way. You can't have one big ass step at the end <laughs> or one miniature step right. at the end. Yeah, yeah. So you got to lay it out. It's all going to be seven and, seven and three eighths, but the code is the riser can't be more than seven. It's got to be less than oh, eight. There it is. Yes. And they clamp. And they see one of these like dudes. Nipple clamp. These things clamped on the side of the bag. That means that guy's for real. I uh. work with a dude named Russ. Who found an old? Automatically, he's yeah, legit. Yeah, Russ, Russ is legit. Russ is legit. A Russ, solid name. Russ was so hardcore, he built his own recumbent bicycles. Whoa! And made the goddamn sprockets. What? <laughs> made the sprockets. Made the sprockets. You could go down to the Schwinn, the aforementioned Schwinn shop for eleven dollars. Get a fucking sprocket, or you can spend all weekend with Russ and a lathe. You know. Russ was hardcore. Russ won a photo of Russ, Russ to pop found, out. I love Russ. Russ found a Gucci bag that, like, I don't know, some client threw out or something, like a handbag, a purse. And because he could do leather tooling and shit too, made himself a Gucci <laughs> construction bag. Oh, that's fucking so Gucci suave. with, that's with what we call Russ. Flex. The but the the bags you had to earn them. You had to break. You had to break them in. Felt great when you strapped them on. And the best part is like when somebody would call lunch or whatever. Take you just off. reach down, undo it, and just drop them. Oh, like God. wherever you were, you didn't have to put them away. There was no shelf. The whole place was plywood. You know, just that feeling of just dropping your and bags. Then, and all of a sudden, you could feel the, the sweat on your ass. Yeah. You know, and you let go of that weight, and you're like, you feel like you could. Like you're a dancer. Like that, all of a sudden, you, uh, can, you can move again for the first time. You can shimmy. I was like Roger Daltrey and Tommy when I got my eyesight back. That's how I felt when that I dropped those bags. That is a deep bags. cut for the kids at home. I'm free. Uh, so, here's the thing I wish. Here's the thing I'm going to tell my son. Hmm. Be careful when you buy a tool, because that will be the tool you own for the rest of your life. I didn't know that. I bought a bunch of crap tools and like one of those kits. Yeah. You buy the kit and it's got all yeah. the tools. Mm -hmm. Now I have like really not great tools. I have like cobalt. Yeah. Just like, just, and I was like, they all match. Yeah. It came in a big plastic thing. Yeah. But I've now had it for like 40 years. That brings me to another standardization proclamation. Oh, thank God. Do we have music for that? Where's my <laughs> handsome guy in the booth? Dun, dun, dun. Now, I don't think Proclamations. there's anybody here man enough to have experienced this, but I can tell you it yeah. is it is heartbreak. Heartbreak. I'll tell you what. I will take a quick break, then I'll tell you the heartbreak and why standardization needs to happen with this, and we'll do it right after this. Simply safe. Well, one last summer getaway. But before you take off, protect your home with the latest innovation from Simply Safe Home Security 24 7 Live Guard Protection with Fast Protect Monitoring. Simply Safe agents can deter intruders through the smart alarm wireless camera, warning them that they're being recorded and that police are on the way. So it sends them heading for the hills. Voted Best Home Security of 2023 by U.S. News and World Report. We all use it here. We've been using it for years. It's a great company. Started by a couple on a college campus who couldn't get good. I think a friend of theirs couldn't get a good home security system. So they went out and they did it themselves. And right now, my listeners get 20% off any Simply Safe system. When you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring, it's a huge offer. It's a limited time, so get cracking. Visit simplysafe.com slash Adam. Two eyes in there. Simplysafe.com slash Adam and get that 20% off. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Matthew Lillard in studio. Quest N Paladin is the name of the libation. And it's it's flying off the shelf, so they may not have made enough in the first batch yeah. to even accommodate you. But if you want to go to questandwhiskey.com, you definitely can uh, try to procure some. That's a good-looking bottle. Um, it, it, each bottle comes with a story. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's a little nerdy, but the thing we're doing is uh, – the whole thing's nerdy. But we're delivering this really premium whiskey – um, and with it comes a story with art and the whole thing. So there's 16 different bottles over the next four years. 
Each one of them has a different character. Uh -huh. Each bottle will continue a story all the way throughout. So by the end of it, you'll have like, you know, a whole sort of, uh, a whole world created and the characters that will go through and, you know, good versus evil all the way through for 16 different bottles. Brilliant. The last bottle depicts a liver transplant. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get too <laughs> But a wizard <laughs> does it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah, when I end up in the old age home with dementia, someone needs to bring me my bags, oh, my, that's my tool idea. bags. Because, yeah. man, that, yeah. And by the way, when you're 19 and a half and you're not feeling good about yourself, strapping on those tool bags just fucking feels, feels like you're Validation. Robin Hood and you're drawing an arrow, a bow back, you know. But here's the thing that needs fixing. Speaking of the, the tools, off of you. Hmm. Um, you, Sears used to do this all the time. Sears had uh, Craftsman tools. Craftsman tools are good. The power tools, no good. The actual mechanics tools, sockets and ratchets and things of that nature, box end wrenches and stuff, that stuff's good. It's not Mac and it's not uh, Mako and it's not, you know, Snap-on, but that stuff's super high end and super expensive. But the, but the Craftsman stuff is good. And once in a while, they'd have a sale, the 99-piece toolbox. Yes. And it was the plastic, where it looked like a medium-sized plastic attache case. Yeah. And every one of those, Absolutely. everyone every had a home, every, every socket. Milli standard millimeter starts at 8, yeah. 9, 10, goes every all the way up to like 22, everything. everything. But everything has just an open little thing, and you just set it in there, and you set it in there. I have and that. It takes you an hour to do it. <laughs> yeah. And then at some point, you go for it in the garage six months later, you plop it down on the slab. The thing says Craftsman Tools stamped on the top. You pop it open and you lift it up, but it's it, upside down. It all and every up. fucking <laughs> socket spills out on the garage floor and rolls down the driveway. Ding, 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 and I'm ding, like, ding, ding, I just spent all this time sorting it. Could you designate an up and a down? Could you, uh, Craftsman, you could I spray paint at <laughs> the top you go. We silver? Standardization. Each side of this plastic tool thing just says Craftsman on it. There's yeah. no top, there's no up, there's no anything. You just throw it on the ground, you pop it, and you lift it, and everything goes sailing yeah. everywhere. Yeah. What the fuck? When you lose one of those sockets, does it drive you crazy? It yes. screw drives me like, crazy. It's like ah. that thing where you're like, it's like you've got, like you're missing four in the middle and you know it's not the big one and you know it's not the small one <laughs> yes. and you are effed. Yes, yes. <laughs> totally effed. And I'm usually pissed off because somebody took it. Oh, for sure. Where's my number 12? For Who's sure. got my number 12? God damn it. <laughs> and then there's always some bad version of it. It will work like I could use a standard, like an American. I could use a 916. It won't be... Perfect, but and it's a deep dish, and I don't want a deep dish, but it'll it'll yeah. work. Yeah. Well, the deep dish when you've got that long extender thing I that love has that. to that I don't know how to use those things. I'm like, wait, what? When do I use this weird? <laughs> you got to have the that feel. The feel of putting on a socket wrench it's not feels oh, good. Yeah. And like Very that clicking, yes. that feels good. Yeah, it feels masculine. See, it's I feel I may not have the belt. But I clicked that thing and I feel it masculine. It feels positive. It does feel positive. You know what helped you? What if you put magnets in there? Each thing was magnets. Expensive. I, it would be. But I think they're getting bougie. better. But I'm bougie, yeah. Sears could clearly delineate what side was up and we, could, we could end this scourge. I think but Sears we can't. is gone. Is yeah, Sears well, that's, gone? you want to know why? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you why. <laughs> no, so I was saying to Drew that Wait, it was funny. Quick, let yeah. me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Do you have one of those benches? Like, do you have the big, like, craftsmen? They used to have those big benches, like the big tool thing. You have a thing here, and then the thing that's, you have all like those shelves that pull the, out. Yeah, I have everything times oh, you 20. Do. Oh, yeah. Too that's much. So good. Sorry, Too keep much. going. You were your, to Drew. So, I was saying to Drew um, when he's talking about purses and the elderly and mm. babies, dolls and stuff like that. He said, "Like, well, what? What? Why does a woman like need a purse? Like, why does she really need a purse?" And I, he said, "Tampons. It's all tampon based. It's all tampon <laughs> it's and not pad. Tampon it's based. Tampon it is not tampon centric. based. It is. This it's, is how you get in trouble by saying <laughs> things like tampon it's tampon centric. It is not. They don't care about tampons. Pads and tampons. It is. You can't pocket oh those. All right. 
percentage of girls who carry women. a purse. Women. Women. Well, I'm saying girls because percentage of girls that carry a purse pre-period versus post-period, as mm. soon as that period kicks in, 100% with the purse. We're down in the low 30s before that kicks in. I'm telling you, you need to transport tampons and pads, and you're not going to grab a handful of tampons and walk out of the house. It's got to be in the purse. You can't put them in your pocket. You can't I, I stuff do, them in your the, pocket. Women's pockets are tiny. They're too tight. It make, make them bigger pockets. They're they may not decoration. need purses. Yeah. It's all tampon related. <laughs> I'm wow. telling you, that's that's the delineation. It's when they start to period. You don't see nine year old girls walking around with a purse. As soon as you get that first period, here's your purse. Purse. Here's your purse. The first tampon should <laughs> come in a purse. purse. <laughs> it's really like my first. Potex <laughs> presents my first my maxi first pad, purse. and it just comes in a <laughs> in a purse. How else would you transport a a maxi pad or a tampon? You tell me. I don't. Yeah. I don't. At you school, you have the have book it. with the pages cut out. Yeah, you in the shape <laughs> of the maxi pad. That's I, what I causes it. It's what causes it. Uh, I'm right. not judging. Right. No, I know. Well, what do you what do you keep in your uh, in your fanny pack? I keep my camera. I carry a camera a lot. So I keep a camera. A dedicated camera. I know it's stupid, but I no, do. I like that. I like it. I like it. It's a um, it's a hobby that I I, okay. I enjoy. Because I what? tried doing it, and I, the only thing I would put in there is my phone, because my phone is also my wallet. Yeah. So I just oh, like it, it would just be a phone holder, and I thought, oh, I don't need this. Yeah, and, and then I, I'll pocket. do it like I'll do it if I'm going to a convention or a con or something. I'll carry it around, and I'll have stuff that smells good and gum. And is it a good camera? It is. Yeah, I shoot a Leica. Oh, oh yeah, that's cute. Camera, it's yeah. it's really it's a great camera, and it's and I and I. I started to take, I mean, look, I always take pictures. I love taking pictures. Um, but I go to these conventions, right? I'll go to a con and sign autographs. And What are you mainly signing for? Uh, it's, I, you know, it's so funny. I've been around sort of in the zeitgeist for so long. People find me for whatever reason, right? It's Scooby-Doo, Scream, SLC Punk's yeah. popular. Oh, yeah, SLC um, Punk. You know, there's a bunch of things. And now I'm, you know, I can't talk about it because we're striking, but I'm in a new movie coming up that's, that's more popular than anything I've ever been attached to. More popular in the sense that if it's it's lineage. Yeah, it's a it's based on a very successful video game, and um, well, I'm, I I I could say I'm not on strike. Five Nights at Freddy's is what I'm looking for. That's to. a popular video game. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't know anything about based on a video game. I also business. never played yeah. video games. You <laughs> didn't play video. I still play video games. They'll be in theaters October. 27th. I like video games, but I don't watch TV. You can take my oh, controller. I don't watch TV. I watch TV. What do you, only sports? What do you watch? I'll tell you what I watch. But first, I'll tell you what happened with me in video games. Okay. I'm old. Yes. They weren't really around. <laughs> we are getting old. They weren't really around. And then they were around. But my family never had any money. And then they, they lived at a very dangerous intersection, which is they had no money and they didn't really care about their kids or food or video games or stuff like that, right? Now, the thing is, is if you're poor, but you're sort of proud, like you're poor, but you really care, you'll figure out a way around some good meals and some video games. Like you, you'll procure things because mm. you care. Mm. You don't really have the money, or but, save. You, yeah, yeah. but you care. Yeah. And then there's the version where you have money and you don't care, but I'll care enough for both of us. I'll just spend your money on video games and eating food. But my family was didn't care and didn't have money, so that meant no vids, no stuff, no at art, all. no no Atari, no like no. even back in the old day of like Nintendo or no. Oh. I had a few. I had a friend named Brian who Brian. Got, he got the he Fucking got the game Brian. he got the game Pong. <laughs> oh yeah, and I would go to his house. I'd go to other people's house, and then there were guys at my junior high that had electronic football. Sure, and then they'd be standing there and. Tecmo. All I did was mooch. So I would stand next to these guys and go, could I play Snap? Could I play Snap? And they'd be like, no. And then I'd go, are you going to finish your peanut butter and jelly sandwich? And they'd go, I don't know. And I would just stand there. I, my my childhood is essentially like, you have a dog? Yes. You know when you're eating and your dog just oh, sits yeah. there? Sure. That's what I did. <laughs> I just sat there and went, are you going to you gonna finish that egg roll? Or, oh, I guess yeah. you are. All right, well, maybe there's something else. I would just do maybe what tomorrow. my dog maybe does. Tomorrow. Yeah, maybe tomorrow I'll get something. Yeah. So 
I just stood by people and watched mm. them playing. And then... <laughs> that sounds horrible. By that's way, like Twitch in real life. Horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. It's, it's sort of all I had. was like I watched people Where play... Where did you grow up? Out here. I watched people play... I watch people play pinball for 200 hours. You know what I mean? Just guys just playing pinball. And they're just standing next to them the whole time at yeah, the 7-Eleven. Yeah. And then at some point, I'd be like, hey, uh, Chris, could I play ball? And they'd be like, yeah, maybe. You know, he'd just be playing. Just like, get one flipper. And at some time, some point, he'd want a Slurpee or something. And I'd go, all right, play a ball, but don't fuck it up. And then, oh, I get to play oh. a ball. Like but I never had any. I never had any money. I watched. People That's another smell. Play by the stuff. Way. The, the convenience store back in the eighties. You go yes. in and that smell. And there was video games and yeah, yeah. That was a whole smell. So at some point, I I made some money. I had my own house up in the hills. I had a big screen TV back when there were the big sure. you know, TVs, and I had money and I had time, and I was like. I want to try a video game. I've never played it. Mm. I never got to play a video game. My 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 family was so downtrodden that I never was exposed. But and I went down to Amoeba, I think in Hollywood. Sure. And I think I bought a video game there. And I I like World War II shit, you know. Mm. So I bought like you know Call of Duty or something or Great whatever game. whatever it was. Great game. And this one was cool because in this one you're on a battleship. Oh, it was Pearl Harbor, I think. It was Pearl Harbor. So you're down in the bunks mm -hmm. of the battleship, and you go up to the deck, and you like Cuba Gooding Jr., and you man yourself like a 50 caliber machine gun, <laughs> and you just <laughs> shoot it at the zeros that are dive bombing in on you. And I'm like, now it's time to live, because I've earned it. And I'm a success. Yeah. And did you? And did you? Were you the kind of guy that had to complete it? Did you like it? Or you? I, I you never, never, I never, I never, never made found it. Purchase. I know. I never made it out of the bunk. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I got up, got out of the bunk because I showed the sirens were going off. Ran down the hall, opened the door, was hit by a ball of flames. Started back in the bunk again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now the alarm goes off again. I get out. This time I go down another hall and. Uh, and the ship blows up. I, I go see back. Why Kristen want to let you play pinball for. I never. <laughs> after an hour and forty five minutes, I never got out of the bunk, and I kept saying, "I just want to get up to the deck I just and see something. shoot." I just want to see Cuba. <laughs> I want to Cuba see Cuba. And I need to save the day. And I, I start calling people, and they're like, "You got to get out of the lower thing. You got to make your way up to the deck, yeah. and then you could do." It. And I go, "I can't make it out." And they're like, "Well." So the whole video game was me just trying to get out of a bunk. <laughs> I, uh, and back I like. To the bunk. I will. I will play a video game. I only play one game. I used to play Call of Duty, um, and I used to. I, I used to play all those games, but now I just play FIFA. I play FIFA soccer. Mm. Buy it every year. I take. I take over a team. I manage the team. I find oh, new manager. talent. <laughs> I train my boys. I give them pep talks. We kick ass. Are you even are you doing any in-game stuff or is it all just managing a team? Uh, it's no, I play the game. Like, okay. I, I, we go off and we win and we win and we win. Um, but I, that's my jam. It's it's how I'd campaign. rather. Yeah. yeah, that's my my downtime. What's uh what's the origin story? You you move out here. How does how does acting come about? Um I had a severe learning disability. I sucked at everything. Um and my dad said to me you can either take a typing class or an acting class. In when you were how old? Uh, 13. Wow. Uh, you know, school, right? But it, you know, back then you had to learn how to type right. on a typewriter. For sure. Uh, and he thought, you know, someday you're going to be a salesman, so you better be, you know, comfortable in front of people. Uh, and I got into an acting class and I, you know, it was eighth grade, I guess. I was in eighth grade and um, I found something that like the adults in the room were like, hey, you're pretty good at that. And uh, and I just carried that through. I mean, I never thought I'd be a professional actor, but I just I never stopped. Right? You were good at sports, and well, I, listen, I played sports my whole life. But when I got into high school, I can either go to soccer or I could do this thing I'm actually good at. And I was, right. you know, obese kid. And I oh, you're obese? Yeah. My mom and dad were God bless them both, but they were you know they came from Michigan. They didn't know how to eat. We were working class poor, and so we. I literally. I'm not exaggerating. My dad started his own company when I was 10. That's why we moved from Detroit to California. And my mom and dad built that company by themselves. And so, you know, they'd work nine to seven every night and come home with McDonald's. 
Mm-hmm. So, oh. and then I was a latchkey kid, and I'd come home. And I, I think I told this story. I may have told it on the show at some point, but I would. I was such a uh, I was such a lost kid, and I sucked at school. So I I would come home, and I knew I had to do homework, but. I would just I'd turn on TV and I'd start eating a bag of Doritos and the I, I always tell the story that and my kids don't believe it but I would get that you know you'd get that one pound bag of Doritos and I'd eat so many Doritos I'd be stuffed so then I would just suck off the nacho cheese flavor <laughs> and feed it to the dog wow so we would have been great friends you would have been wow. you would have been stuffed because I would, I would just I would just be I, I just would eat so much because I was I was just, just a lost kid. You know, um, you know, and I was broken in school and super neurodivergent, right? That's what they're calling it now. But they call it neurodivergent. Yeah, like a kid that just learns different. I was in. I'll put this way: when I was a junior in high school, um, I was doing speak. True story. I was doing speak and spell. Cat, dog. The, mm-hmm. You know those little. I take that home for my homework. Yeah. So I was out trying to you know make out with girls and going to parties and doing theater and and like sneaking into class late and leaving late so that nobody would see me going into this class with you know kids down syndrome and and me i mean it was this very weird sort of high school experience but look i was doing something i was good at it and i i liked being good at something and so i just kept going and kept going how big were you um, I was, so I'm 6'4 now. Um, I was 5'5, five, five, 180 pounds in high school uh, as high school started. So 5'5, five, five, 180 was, was big. Well, was especially by those standards, those days' standards. Yeah. Like, you forget how goddamn skinny everyone was back then. Yeah, I just Nobody watched. was like that an episode of the Partridge family last night. Cause that's what I do. And <laughs> everyone is skinny as fucking shit. Yeah. Like you thought the manager, Ruben Kincaid was the fat guy. He's 185, 190 pounds, six foot two. Like he was the Husky one on the show. Everyone yeah. else like rail thin. And they had this funny scene where they're in the army and Danny got recruited to the army and whatever it was, but they had this whole scene where there's like 20 guys in the army and they're just wearing their boxer shorts. Never seen 20 guys that skinny. There wasn't anybody. Everybody like old pictures of Woodstock. Everyone's in their underpants, just rails. So, you know, you may have fit in a little better now, but back then you were Husky. Listen, and you know, you, when you feel like an outsider, when you identify, when you realize you're not like everyone else, it's hard to drop that. So I, I you know, I've always had, even in my fittest times, I've always had this sense of, of being a fat kid, you know, and, and I don't think that ever goes away. In fact, I directed a movie called Fat Kid Rules the World. And the whole reason I was drawn to it was because I was like, oh, you know, identify, the, I, once you hold that, once you're, once you have that in you, it never goes away. No, I... I completely, I yeah. completely agree. You yeah. have to go back sometimes, like if you think you're unattractive, for oh. instance, and then you just go back and look at a picture of yourself when you're 22, and you're like, I was good looking. I was but cute. you have to, if yeah, you give yeah, it yeah. 20 years yeah. before you do it, because you always just feel unattractive, <laughs> yeah, yeah. whatever whatever it's, stage you're in. So funny. I, I, I literally, if you go to TikTok, like you know, there's kids are always like, oh my god, I have such crush on you. <laughs> All these pictures when I'm like 26 <laughs> years old. I'm like, of course you do. He was adorable. I was an adorable kid. And, you know, and even back then, even at the height of, you know, Scream, and you're sort of, you know, you, you are in your prime, and you, I had no sense of being in my prime. I never had that sense of, I'm young, I'm, you know, I'm relatively famous, quote unquote famous, um, you know, and handsome, and I just never really sort of got that. Well, that leads to a theory, which is you get, I really feel like for men, I don't know about for women, but right? I think for men, you get locked in to your own, I don't want to say sexuality, but your own, here's how the opposite sex perceives me. Mm. You get locked into it at some age between about 13 and 15 and a half or 16, and it just kind of stays with you. And later on, if you're good looking and tall and successful and stuff like that, you still have a weird kind of locked in 14 year old fat version of yourself. 
and 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 that's your first encounter with how do females perceive me so from zero to 13 or 14 or wherever the first time you put that maxi pad in your backpack that you don't care about you're not interested in women like you're interested in your friends and mm. and stuff like that then from about that point on it becomes you know eighth grade ninth grade tenth grade like how do women and now i'm showing up in this place called school it's half men and half women most people don't know where you're from or what junior you know what grade school you went to or something and we get to find out what the opposite sex thinks of you and if the answer is not a lot then it sort of just stays with you like you just you just carry that through and then i also think before that i think your mom kind of sets the table before you get to like junior high in terms of like attraction like my mom didn't want anything to do with me so i was like well if your mom doesn't like you then who's likes it why right. would anyone like you she like has to like yeah you. yeah your own mom not a fan so then why would this stranger be this way do you still think that now yeah that like, your mom didn't like you oh she didn't dislike me but she wasn't interested i mean she didn't right she didn't she wasn't Did you involved. ever confront her about abuse. that is your mom still alive no she passed about I don't know. It's been a year. Oh, oh boy. Right. Oh, that's Not still been that long. You know, there's a rule in acting that you can't deal with anything that's happened in your life over the last seven years in your work. Oh, really? Yeah, because it lives in your body. When so is that, that trauma is still very much alive in you. I don't have trauma over her mm. death. Yeah, <laughs> and, <laughs> and that rests my case. And that rests my case. I, I wait. Sometimes I'm, well, I, I think about it like I'm years. grateful. Like yeah, I, I'm still, the worst son in the world. It's going to come back. It, it's good. I, I, I don't. I will say this. I, I think that that we are all gifted these protections, right? We build these. I call them an emotional ninja. This thing that keeps you safe and protects you. And everything that you're telling me about your your childhood, your emotional ninja is very gifted. Thank you. Because it protects you at all turns. Your comedy. You are funny because you were in so much pain growing mm. up. It's, your purse. it's possible, but th then, it's, then... Come on, why do you think you're funny? Well, I, listen, I used to sort of subscribe to that theory, you know, but then I realized there's tons of miserable people that aren't funny at all, who had horrible childhoods and horrible come from horrible grief and stuff, and sure. they're just depressed as shit and popping pills. But that pills. just means that their ninja didn't use comedy. Their ninja used drugs or alcohol oh, well, that, or that anger may be true. or vitriol. I mean, but then, I, you know, I, oftentimes I think about, like, Jimmy Kimmel. You know, we, him and I come from very different places. His parents were, I wouldn't say doting, but they were fans, you know. Sure. They took care of him. His mom, sweet and lovely and involved and stuff like that. And, you know, he was every bit into comedy as I was into comedy, even though we both came from these very, very different, different backgrounds. So I started to kind of think that comedy was sort of like, having a musical ear yes, where you just had that ear and you could do it. And I always kind of had that ear. I can't sing, but I could always be yeah. funny. So I started to change my head on it and not think of it so much as a reaction to something versus something you're kind of like a, a gift. gift. Yeah. Yeah. I, a listen, gift. <clears throat> I've, I find I, re, I have distinct memories back in eighth grade where I would be funny one day. I would literally make people laugh. And the next day I would try to be funny and I would flop. I mean, it was so clear in and out. And I have these very clear memories of going, am I funny? I think I'm, and then completely shitting the bed. And I see my son now going through the same thing. My son's very charming, very funny. And He's figuring out that he's funny, which is sometimes hard to watch because he's also, you know, that thing where you're like, oh, that was not funny. That was too far. How old is he? Uh, he's 15. Oh, he's right getting there. So he's right in that sweet spot. And he is this thing where he's shooting up. He's beautiful and he has no idea how handsome and how 
like lovely a kid he is. He's just a is a charming. Well, don't tell. Beautiful. Him. I I'm like literally. I'm like you're ugly. We his- <laughs> you're ugly. You're not athletic. Get that ninja workout, bro. Stupid boy. Stupid <laughs> stupid boy. Well, so you you and- want to be funny? Grab daddy to go. <laughs> is that funny? Yeah. You and I kind of had the same experience of being horrible students, and then the sort of soul crushing experience of showing up to a place every day where you just didn't excel at all. At all. It's brutal. And and. What people don't really understand is, you know, when you're a student, that's it. Full-time job. That's what you do. Mm. You get up at 7 in the morning every day, and you come home at 4 in the afternoon. And I just went to a place where, you know, my my high school, I, they didn't keep records. But I was, when I graduated high school, I was 500 out of 550. Like, that's pretty damn low is in, that an actual the, number or is that a relative number? I mean, no, that, we, I, we have a piece of paper that has the, my graduate, where I ranked, oh, you know, amazing. in high school. I think I was like 498 out of like 560 or 497 out of 570. Oh, wow. Right. So, so you were not good at high school. 1.75. Oh, there GPA. it is. <laughs> oh, I feel a 175. Yeah, that's what 175. You do, so here's the funny thing. So in my life, I, my mom and dad never helped me. God bless them. Never were like, what are you doing after high school? They just, because I started working two days before I turned 16, I started working. Mm-hmm. And I worked all the way through high school. So I, my mom and dad never asked me about college. They were never like, where are you going next year? Never like had an impetus to push me towards college. Right. Um, so I literally graduated high school. I'm like, well, I don't know what, what I'm going to do yeah. now. Yeah. So to my, I mean, I then went to junior college, mm-hmm. took, you know, 20 credits, 18 of them are in theater arts, two of them were in history, <laughs> I failed history right. in college, and like, you know, junior college just crushed, at Fullerton Junior College, crushed the theater department. Yeah, um, you had a So what do you do with go. 175, what do you do? Um, you graduate high school. Uh, I was, there was no, yeah, there wasn't any college talk for me. Same. And... The economy was bad, and I was making signs to put up on um, Coldwater Canyon that said, like... You were in prison? (laughs) Yeah, no, you need your lawn mode or whatever with this, my home number on it. Like, like work, just stuff. I I literally made signs to just put it on a telephone pole. It's so like if you're driving down, you know, Coldwater Canyon and you're stuck in traffic wow. and you need someone to come to your house and like haul some trash or cut down a bush or something, call me. I'll do stuff. And I would like to show up, you know, take my dad's lawnmower and stuff and just like put it in the back of the trunk of my dad's car, like drive to somebody's house in Sun Valley or something. Did your mom and dad look at you and go, what is your plan? Like, what are you doing? No. Like, no, they didn't have a so plan. So then how did you get to... So what was the break? How did you get out of that? Um, I was wandering around just doing sort of manual labor everywhere, anywhere I could for, you know, seven bucks an hour. And then at at some point, some friend of mine named John called me and said, I'm working on a construction site. I'm working on a house in Silver Lake and they need somebody to pull ivy off the side of the house. It's like Hill House, Silver Lake growing up the side of the fucking thing ivy was the worst they need somebody to pull this ivy off for a day you want to make 50 bucks or 70 bucks or whatever it is and i was like uh yeah count me in and he picked me up that morning like two to the horn vw bus you know came out at seven in the morning spent the day ripping ivy off the side of the house and walking up those weird narrow stairs up sure. to the street like throwing <laughs> in the dumpster and everything and i kicked such ass at it because i was like I was strong and I had low self-esteem. I was like, I'll fucking eat lunch standing up. I don't even need lunch. I will bust my ass. That's why I'm so appalled at the situation when I see young people working these days. But I'll fucking do anything. <laughs> and at the end of the day, you know, covered with sweat, covered with rat shit and, you know, ivy dust and everything. The guy's just like, well, come back tomorrow. One more day. Fucking showed up the next day. with Terrence. I'd be taking stuff to the dumpster and running, you know. And, and of course, they were like, this white boy's fucking busting his hump for seven bucks an hour. And they were like, come back the next day, you know? And then sure. eventually I just became a laborer on the like crew, on the, on the crew just yeah. digging ditches and stuff, 
stuff like that. Speaking of bags, like one of my greatest heartache was I got my first check like after two weeks, you know, and immediately went out and bought shiny new bags, like construction bags. And after two weeks, like showed up to the job I had my new bags. I brought my new bags, you know, and I put them on. And the foreman, like, looked at me. These guys were all Vietnam vets on pain pills, you know. Sure. The guy just like, looked at me and go, got some new bags. And I'm like, yeah, new bags. And he goes, good. Take them off. Pick up that shovel and get back in the ditch. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck. I had to take the bags off. Grab the shovel and climb back it's into the weird. hole I was digging for, <laughs> for weeks on end. But Should have kept them on, give, yeah. worn them in. I uh, I just clung onto it with both hands. Yeah, like yeah. this is all I got, and that's uh, that's the story. It's good. Yeah, one point seven five. That's right, one point seven five. Matthew, the uh, whiskey line is Quest and Paladin, and it's the bottle's beautiful. The story's better. The uh, I haven't tasted it yet, but if you it's really good, want to send bottle over, it's I will really definitely good. sample Select that. Select them all. Questandwhiskey.com is where you go to uh, find out all about this very interesting process. Matthew, uh, always great. Come back whenever you like. Thanks, brother. Appreciate Please. It. We'll talk to a comedian, Paul Verzi, right after this. Let me tell you about Angie, homeowners. You know, it's a lot of work to own a home, whether it's uh, everyday maintenance, repairs, or dream projects. It can be hard to even know where to start. All you need is Angie. Your home for everything home. Find a skilled local pro who will deliver quality and experience. Over 20 years of home service experience. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie handles the rest. Look, you're busy. You don't have time to do all this stuff. Let Angie handle it. Take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit online. Visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. A-N-G-I dot com. That's Angie. Let them do all the heavy lifting. Paul Verzi is on the Adam Carolla Show. Good to see you, Paul. Oh, thanks for having me, bud. Paul's got dates and uh, this Friday, Saturday, San Diego, the American Comedy Company and uh, Hartford's coming up and Helium's coming up. Go to Paul Verzi and I'll t- tell you how to spell it. V-I-R-Z-I dot com is where you go. Thanks for coming yeah, in. Yeah, thank you for spelling it because nobody does it and people always screw it up. So I appreciate it. Well, there's no way you're phonetically going to work out Verzi when you're listening to this podcast. And there's a lot of names that are that way. And it's the right. host's job to yeah. tell you how to spell it. I love it. I, I love uh, it. Oh, well, thank you. All right. So you, um, you open for Bill Burr a lot. Back in the day. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, now I haven't opened for Bill now in, in, you know, five, six years, but he's such a dear friend. You know, he's really maybe the best working comic out there yeah, now. He's, he's I great, think. Man. I mean, it's you know you can, you know, you watch a lot of specials, yeah. and there's um, and and there are guys that are pretty highly touted guys. You know, there's Dave Chappelle, sure, and like you watch Dave Chappelle, and you go, it's funny, like I get it, but it's a lot of hanging out, smoking, and and telling stories, <laughs> right. and and I think there's a lot of it is just like. A sort of cool factor. At, a, yeah. at some point, the comedian transcends their act. Now yeah. we're, we're watching Dave Chappelle do a, a presentation or something. Yeah. But Bill just jokes, sticks with just, it. Yeah, and, just goes out and jokes, keeps writing, keeps working on it. And yeah, I know exactly what you mean, too. Yeah, you've... you've I mean, look, I... First off, you know, when people go, oh, you're throwing shade, you can throw a little shade at a billionaire who does whatever they want and is considered <laughs> yeah. to, to walk on water yeah. in this business. Yeah. I, I, I think so. But I feel, don't you feel like some guys just sort of are them? And you know what You know what bothers me? This is probably going to piss off a lot of my peers, but this whole thing of like sitting on the chair the entire set, and yeah. maybe it's because I'm like Italian and Greek and I can't physically do that. Right. But like you just sit there and act like it's that important what you're saying. I I agree. You, you know I, what I mean? I, like, it feels, it's not that fucking, uh, I could, uh, please, I've, curse, please. okay. Curse, I, I, but listen, <laughs> I feel the same way about Adele. 
Like she's doing a concert and then she does 14 minutes of crowd work in the middle of it. Yeah. Hey, where are you from? And and I get it. It's gratifying for her because everyone laughs at the yeah. weakest jokes and is yeah. amused by it or whatever. But, you know, Celine Dion, Adele, get up there and fucking dance, bitch. Yeah, yeah. I want to hear the hits and That's... keep them keep them coming. The sitting down, lighting a cigarette, let's have a care. conversation. I, I'm not here for that part. I don't care about your your what you think politically. I don't right. care what you think socially. Right. You know, it's get with the hits, right? Yeah. I, I came here for a few songs. <laughs> I don't need to hear it, man. I can't stand when people do that. I, I completely agree. It's, Unless I agree with them politically, and then I'll go, preach, oh, brother. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have endless tolerance. When Carlos Santana's yeah. up there, like, I believe a man is a man and a woman's a woman. Like, save the hits, Carlos. <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> Carlos, put the guitar down. I can't yeah. hear you. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I don't need to hear anything. Keep going. These people need to hear the truth. <laughs> it, it is funny if someone utters anything you Let agree with. Let them know with. how many sexes there are, Carlos. <laughs> right. We should always say, I I don't need this celebrity preaching shit I disagree with. Because if it's shit you agree with, then go on forever. Yeah. If, if Celine Dion was like, what's with passion fruit iced tea? What the fuck do we need passion fruit iced tea for? It tastes like you took a fucking candle and dunked it in hot water. I'd be like, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. But if it's the environment, you're like, all right. All right. Right. We get it. Well, speaking uh, of the environment, I, I don't know why. But this uh, struck me. So as I was watching the Partridge Family the other night, which I <laughs> I study the old TV shows to kind of find out where we we're at. Yeah. At the time, you know, watch the Love Boat, learn the hairstyles, learn the dress, the vernacular. Yeah. And, and all the jokes were like the same, like sort of seventies jokes. You know, almost like vaudevillian stuff. Yeah. They just they did a lot of repeats on a lot of the same themes and stuff like that like the, the the big 70s thing is you know around vietnam and like the hippie movement was coming in and there was all these guys with long hair and big sideburns but there was still half the country was wearing suits and sh yeah. brill cream in their hair it was a so now we don't have the clash of the cultures so now what we have is everyone's a douchebag wearing cargo shorts and flip flops. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, there's no, there's no. Mark mix. Zuckerberg is wearing the same cargo shorts that the you got at a home in Old Navy and yeah. flip flops and whatever. But back then, as the '60s in in Free Love and Janis Joplin and you know Tune In and Drop Out and all the Timothy Leary shit was kicking. Yeah. The other half of the country was living like they were in the 50s. Yeah. They were looking like Fred McMurray from My Three Sons, <laughs> like brown suits and dress shoes and hair slicked back and stuff. Like, yeah. So then there was all these jokes, these the, the gap. There wasn't the gender gap. Right. There was the generation gap. And so every joke was so cool grandson wearing the wearing the vest with the with the tassels on it, with the fringe on it, and he'd go Hey, Grandpa, far out. And he'd like look at Grandma and go, far up? Is that a good thing? That, that was every joke was yeah, didn't yeah. get the cool Did, talk. Yeah. Did you notice, too, like, don't you feel like dressing is so different now? Like, I saw, like, Bill Gates. I mean, dude, Bill Gates. You see Bill Gates walk down the street? It's like, if I had that money, dude. But that's just me. I'm flashy. But if oh, I had I'd, Bill Gates' money, dude. The, the way you dress, forget it. I'd be in the... Budweiser wagon with the Clydesdales oh, oh. pulling me. <laughs> I have I a gold even, suit. Wouldn't need me a Rolex. Oh my God! He he looks. I'd be like President Camacho <laughs> from uh, duh, what the hell? Idiocracy. 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 Yeah. yeah. I love Sandler though. I love how Sandler is just making these movies with his friends, killing it, and just walking down the street in basketball shorts, hanging out with his kids, making movies with his family. It does like pickup games. Just... Oh, he just like walks up. He's like, "Can I play ball with you?" <laughs> And then he stays in that outfit for dinner. Yeah. yeah. Well, w it's two things. One is, you know, comfort and lethargy. But another thing is, is if you act like you have money now, you'll either have a physical target on your back, like yes. walking around with a Rolex, you're going to get rolled, or you'll have an emotional target on your back. Rich guy, rich white guy. Yeah. You know, nobody... That nobody wants to be labeled rich, white, whatever guy. So every celebrity's got to downplay it. Yeah. 
constantly and you've never you always can tell with the interviews where they go like so how'd you grow up uh, uh, you know middle lower middle class not even middle <laughs> yeah. it's always lower yeah middle it, middle class and, uh, what would your dad do uh he was uh the head uh, consultant for united airlines back in the 70s and 80s and, 90s, and my mom worked for getty oil like uh, but lower, yeah, we were very average. Yeah, very, yeah. <laughs> very average. You know, they average. put food on the table, clothes on our back. <laughs> food on the table, clothes on our back. We, uh, yeah, we're in a, look, we're in a country club, but I would have to rent the clubs. My dad did not buy me clubs. Dude, but, I had to share that pool with other rich kids. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, my first car was a Duesenberg, but it wasn't new. It was Clark Gables. <laughs> okay, so we're very lower kind of. My middle. dad's first Rolls Royce was two years old when he got it. I well, mean, you know, it was... we would vacation to the south of France, but my dad said five weeks. That's it. We're getting back on the Concorde, and we're going back to the castle, right in the middle of middle class Burke. You know, I didn't have anything different than any anybody else. No, five weeks. I mean, my first pony was not special. It was standard issue. Gone my with the wind. Didn't even get pony. a white horse. It had no, spots. No, I'm, I'm, yeah, they just have to, <laughs> like, have to yeah. keep going. And it's funny if you're like, but Bill, you're worth like eighty billion. I'm like, ah, you know. I don't. Like, like, I don't. I don't count. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I just want to help. So everyone's doing the down rounding, is what I yeah. what I call it. And uh, except for the blacks, the blacks are like well, fuck, rappers fuck like, this. Sh- like rappers. What I love about rappers is they'll dress in basketball clothes, but they'll have a briefcase with eight million and just show it on Instagram. <laughs> right. And the <laughs> blacks are like, I'm not down with this shit. If I make a nickel, I'm gonna be wearing it around my neck. I'm, I'll be honest with you. I and my friends goof on me about that, Adam. I'm like that. Yeah. Oh, dude, I would try to get like a marble steering wheel in my Lexus. Like, I, <laughs> right. dude, I, yeah, I would go flash all the, yeah, it's, it's definitely, I think I get it from my father, but if I had that money, you'd, you'd kind of know it. Good. I'd like to know what bracket you're in. Yeah. Why not? Let's, I, look, here's the, here's the conceit, I think. I think. Um, if you come from not much and you did it yourself, then wear it on your sleeve and live it. Right. I think a lot of these people come from some things that they feel a little privileged about, like they feel a little guilty about it or something. Now the rappers that come from the fucking projects never met their dad. So they are free to fly. But the guys who come from, you know, the sort of white collar professional grade parents paid for college and shit like that. And now they have a lot of money. They're self-conscious about it. It's almost like, yeah, they set you up. You went to a great school. You should kind of have it. You kind of, yeah, kind of low, it's low ball it. Well, now something reminded me about the Partridge family. <laughs> and then I went off on a, a tangent. <laughs> but um, the, environment. the environment, that's right. The environment, because I was watching the pilot episode of the Partridge family shot in 1970. Could have been late 69, who knows. And at the end of the scene, they had the Partridge family bus going down PCH. And PCH runs uh, right along the Pacific Ocean. And it is the most expensive real estate in the world. And, you know, Jay-Z and Beyonce bought a $200 million house there a few months ago. Uh I live around there, and I walk up and down PCH. I see Bill. I talk to Byron Allen about this. I said, Byron, he has a $100 million place up there. I was like, they're building up along PCH. He's like, oh, I know with all those guys. I was like, this is like $75 million. He's like, no, this is like $125 million houses on the side closest to the ocean. But as I was thinking about this, and we'll show you the shot, it's first off empty PCH. Like, it's it's going down the hill, heading toward L.A., Pepperdine's like up on the hill. But it's now littered with super, super high-end, multi-million dollar homes. But you just run it. Sorry. And they just showed it. There's nothing there. Mm-hmm. This is from 1970. It's all just filled with super expensive houses now. But I was thinking to myself, this is... 50 plus years ago. This is 53, 54 years ago. Right. 
They've been trying to ram this climate change shit up our asses since the 70s. <laughs> Remember the ocean was going to rise? Yeah. Remember the ocean was just going to rise? There will be no more Florida. You can't There'll be build no there. more ice caps. There'll be no Florida. Well, okay, a couple questions. Why is the house closest to the thing that's going to kill them $20 million more than the one that's on the other side of the street, 30 feet over? <laughs> yeah. Number one. The house has an expiration You're date. closer to the killer yeah. ocean. Yeah. That's just right. This is 53 years ago. The ocean's the exact same place it was 53 years ago. There's just a shitload more multi-million dollar homes close to the ocean. Now, did they build there? Did they build along there more? Like, they build still up the just hill. Like that? No, it's all there. It's all built out. Oh. It looks just like this, but now with houses on on the, on the uh, other side, on, on the, the right on, side, yeah, on the right side. I would for a hundred million dollars. If somebody someone give me a snapshot of this thing, I will. I will go down there and film this shit <laughs> later on today, and <laughs> and I will prove to you there's multi million dollar houses all built there. But I'm just saying, I'm older than you guys. I've been hearing about this climate change for fifty some odd years. Yeah. I had a hippie mom. Oceans were going to rise. The polar caps were going to melt. If the it went that way, there'd be up. no PCH anymore. There'd be no PCH. <laughs> a PCH is a fourteen feet above the ocean. This is fifty four years ago. And can't but can't climate always change without catastrophe? Like, yes, that's what I mean. Like, I have no problem with somebody saying, "Oh, climate change, things are shifting." But can't that be something that either corrects itself? And listen, I'm not. A, I mean, I tell, you know, I tell <laughs> dick jokes in strip malls. I mean, I, I what, I, I, what the fuck do I know? But uh, if climate change can happen and still kind of correct itself, and things okay, right? I mean, well, let's put it, let's put it to you this way. Like, let, let me just. Let's do a little thought experiment that I I don't know if I've done on this show because I scream on every show I'm on and I, I sometimes lose track of what I'm talking about. But let's just let's just have it your way, Al Gore. Let's just, John Kerry. <laughs> let's just have it your way. I'll just uh, Hillary Clinton. By the way, it all just seems like a grift to get paid, right? But okay, Hillary Clinton. Who cares about the environment? Okay, um, let's have it your way. It's it's we're or Joe Biden. It's, a, it's an existential crisis, and we got to do something about it because this, this crisis is, is coming. Yeah. It's, it's, it's looming. Okay. So California is earthquake country, and we have earthquakes, and we have big enough earthquakes that shit falls and people get killed. Yeah. So there's an earthquake that's coming. Um, we can't stop the earthquake from coming. Let's say the globe is warming. Uh, we're not going to talk China and India out of making any coal-fired power plants. So they're not doing it. The rest of the developing world yeah. is not going along with our fucking electric cars yet. They're not doing it. They're developing. They're, they're, and they deserve to develop. Yeah. And they need fossil fuels for that. Yeah. So, okay. Now, what we could do, instead of have Greta Thunberg give another blowhard speech... We could actually treat it like an earthquake, which is retrofitting buildings. I worked retrofitting buildings. We had a bunch of brick buildings from the 20s and 30s, downtown yeah. L.A. I had a job retrofitting them. So when the earthquake, we didn't sit around and talk about the earthquake right. and then talk about preventing the earthquake right. and then talk about not 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 using a stove anymore would prevent the earthquake. Somebody went, go retrofit the fucking buildings. Yeah. Go retrofit the freeway overpasses. You, This thing's coming. Go retrofit it. Go fix it. So instead of wringing our hands talking yeah. about this thing that never seems to show up, let's go do something about it. Let's let's innovate. Let's use technology. Yeah, have a solution. Let's, based let's have it, give me yeah. solution other than knock it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah because you never even hear about anything that like is actually being done or built or any. It's always just catastrophes coming. Catastrophe's coming, and you need to stop using your butane camping stove. <laughs> and, 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 yeah. But then there's a forest fire that at, puts more carbon into the atmosphere than all the electric cars could in a hundred years. How so, about when they showed Greta's that Greta when they showed her face just staring at like Trump when he walked in? It was such a it was such a it was so absolutely insulting to like anybody who could see what was happening they're like let's just get this young girl to come in here talk like that you know and even if she's an intelligent i'm not saying she's not intelligent but that was so ridiculous that they that the government brought her in to do that it's like oh they it's, used we replaced her we used to have a crying indian 
We had the Indian <laughs> oh, right. who yeah. cried. A single he, tear. He got bumped off by Greta Thunberg. Uh, they always pick a mascot. And yes. it's always a sad mascot. You know what I mean? Yeah. We got burnt out on uh, Chief Balls a lot. And we <laughs> ended up <laughs> dances with tears. <laughs> uh yeah, Chief emotes too much by the side of the freeway. That I grew up watching the American Indian just crying yeah. by the side of the freeway because we were just dumping. Back then, we were on the nose. We weren't talking about like climate change. We were throwing garbage. We hated the earth so much, we tossed garbage out of moving cars. <laughs> and we man. weren't even... Sometimes we didn't have it. My dad would load up a car with garbage and we'd just drive down the <laughs> yeah, street. Just litter. Looking for that Indian. <laughs> Is that an Indian, Dad? No, it's a Mexican. I got a flat. All right, keep driving. Windows back up. Yeah, windows back up. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, we had the Indian and now we have Greta. At some point, it'll be... A, it, it, the other one that's good is a confused polar bear. Like yeah. a polar bear s- sitting on a block of ice Just going, what? Yeah. Where, where do I go? <laughs> like, oh, we fucked that polar bear up bad, didn't we? They're going to get down to animals. That's yeah. great. They're going to get down to animals. <laughs> Everyone love loves... People, yeah, people er- thought Greta was so... Like, how people are like, oh my God, she's that she's brilliant. It's like my... Hero. It's like, what? It's like people that like really like... Yeah, it's a smart kid that's talking about climate change, but like the fact that they made it the face, yes. again, it was just like... Especially right at the beginning when she was like... 14 or 15. Yes. She's going like, how dare you? And I was like, what? I like, love that speech. When she said, how dare you? You took my childhood away. Like, I was just like, this is heavy. Speech. Like, yeah. it's a little All right. much. But I was getting that fucking speech in 1970 when they were filming the pilot for the Partridge family about taking the childhood away and the uh, poles and the sea rise and nothing. All we have is Jay-Z and Beyonce spending 200 million bucks. And by the way, let me tell you something about insurance companies. If your two hundred million dollar home was going to be engulfed by the sea, do you think you'd get full coverage on no, that house? Hate that. Do you think you could pull a loan from a bank? You can get a fucking. Uh, you know, tell the, the smartest, greediest people on the planet: bankers and yeah. insurance guys. Do you think there'd be any loans or any insurance given out for anyone living down PCA? I love how you started that. You just go, let me tell you something about insurance companies. That's yeah. the fucking best. Um, yeah, but I, dude, I'm like, as a, as a traveling comic and going to all these cities, like seeing what's going on right now, like in the cities, like I, I was just telling them a story. If I, I was going to tell it, I haven't told the story on a... Uh, on another podcast, but if I could tell it here, yeah. please. So I had the craziest thing happen to me when I got here. Okay, and I'm one of these people here, going, LA. Here, here in LA. But I'm one of these people who like. I used to go to New York City. I would do my sets in New York City. Then I'd go get a slice of pizza. I'd hang out. I'd stay with my friend. We'd smoke a cigar. Now I do my sets. I get in the car and I leave because people are getting randomly jumped. People are getting stabbed. Like the yeah. city. And people are like, what do you mean? And I'm like, what do you mean? Are you not paying attention to what's happening in the city? They're not talking about it. But the best cities. So then I I come to out here and I go to to, to Burbank. I wanted to be in Burbank, and the reason I wanted to be in Burbank was because because I had a lot of podcasts and I had a lot of things to do near Burbank. So I go to this hotel and this happened. This is one of the craziest things that's ever happened. I go out, we go out, we, we eat dinner. I get back to the hotel. I'm on phone calls that were stressing me out. I get through those phone calls. I lay down around 10 o'clock at night, get in bed. I get four knocks on my door. Seems like, like housekeeping, but I'm like, it's 1030. So luckily I don't say anything. This is all 100%. I don't say anything. And I look in the door and there's a dude, no shirt, jacked no shirt jack wool hat hiding something behind his back looking up and up and down the hallway and i'm just Ooh. and i'm i'm vulnerable as shit i'm in boxer briefs and i just settled down and now um i'm looking through and the goods and he's got something behind his back i can't tell what it is i see like a can or something he's just looking around so then i'm freaked out so a few minutes later the guy this is inside the hotel this is, this is in, in his room this is this is i know my, it's your door but it's not is, like a lot motor lodge or no, something no, no, no. Or down on the no no this is like a, no this is like a extended hallway. stay marriott yeah yeah no it's this hallway and like he's right there and he's looking around he's looking weird and i'm like in my underwear trying to go to bed so he leaves and i walk over and i'm on the third floor and my room is looking down towards the courtyard and the pool and i walk up dude and i crack the the curtain and he's down there, no shirt, looking up at, at my room. So now I'm going, now this is a horror movie. Now, now. he knows you're in Now there. this is a horror movie, and I'm freaking, and I'm, so I call downstairs, I go, I don't know if you guys know this, there's a dude with no shirt, acting really weird, he's like, can you guys check? So I see through my, through the hole, I see them employees, you know, scanning up and down the, the floor. 
I don't see. I hear thuds in the room next to me, but from the inside now, like so, like somebody's next in the room. But then that goes away. So I call down. I go, Mr. Verzi, we're sorry. We don't hear. We don't hear anything. We, oh. don't, we didn't see anything. So I, like I start to calm down and I start to settle. I go, Maybe this guy just went to the wrong room, dude. Twenty minutes later. This dude, bang, 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 throwing his shoulder into the, and, and, and he's going like this, ah, God, get, dude, yo, I fucking, I grabbed my shit, I called, and I said to the lady, you got to get a police officer here, escort me off, I'm leaving this hotel, and she tried to ask me a question, I go, ma'am, get the fucking yeah. cops here, and I'm getting, and, and, okay, okay, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, Burbank police, I get a phone call to the room, they go, Burbank police want to talk to you on the phone before they come, before they come. So I go, oh, okay, do they? Okay, great. <laughs> so I got a raging lunatic trying to break yeah, down right. my door. He's jacked up, and he wants... So they were like, is he there now? They're asking me all kinds of... They put me on hold. Finally, I hang up the phone with the police, and I call downstairs. I go, the two gentlemen that were looking for this guy, get him up here, escort me off the property. I'm leaving the hotel right now. So he goes, Mr. Frizz, do you want us to knock? I said, I'll see you come to the door. He's like, how about we knock twice? I get my stuff. I knock. They knock. We go downstairs. I tell them everything. They almost start interrogating me. Right. Like... They're yeah. almost like, so the, the sound was from the inside of the room? Right. When you, and I'm mm. like, dude, there was a guy, you know, I told him the whole thing. Come to find out the next day, the next day I called because, uh, you know, my, I had people, I was like, I don't know if this guy's a lunatic. I don't know if I was, you know, I don't think I'd be targeted, but it was weird. I was looking up at the room, going back to my room twice. Right. Found out they took somebody who was a non-guest, a non-guest off the property who was completely drugged out and God forbid I would open that door, but I'm in a hotel in Burbank, California, trying to relax, and I got some drugged out dude banging on my thing, and God knows what happens if I open that door. And it's like, so when I tell people, like, yeah, things are kind of not as safe anymore, and they're like, oh, dude, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's like, no, that was a horror movie. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine a dude with no shirt trying to bang on, like, and it was almost like the horror movie where it settles down, and you're like, oh, it's okay. I could go to bed now. Right. It was the wrong room. And then it's like, no, I'm here. I'm going to uh. kill you. It was brutal, man. I'm like, yeah. So I got another hotel. I got, I got out of Burbank, but that's that happened and it was free it freaked me out man there's no like security footage of this oh yeah that's the other thing i said i said you got cameras by the pool in the hallway no mr we, have, we only have cameras in the lobby oh that's great so i could have been so people could get murdered on the third floor yeah in room three know. whatever and yeah well great. the problem is is there's so many drugged out meth head nut jobs running around in the street that you don't really know you know what's going to happen so when I was, I grew up out here, there was like, there was only two people you had to kind of, the, the street was either filled with, you know, fathers and sons and mothers and daughters and couples strolling. Yeah. And, or you might see a gangbang or something, in which case you had to keep an eye on them. But there wasn't this whole swath of humanity who yeah. may, so may fall asleep and take a dump in their pants yeah. and die in the night or may take a ball peen hammer to your head yes. when you're walking out of the chilies. Yeah. So we don't know, which is causing a lot of the problem because yeah. as long as you're going to have large groups of humanity flailing out in the street yep. who by the way need a weapon because they need to protect themselves because they're living in the street and who are sure. all schizophrenic and paranoid and hearing on, voices on drugs, yeah. and they're telling me that the you know this version of speed is 10 times more fucked up than the ones we yeah. grew up with and <laughs> yeah. these guys are having psychotic episodes then yes this is going to happen. Could you imagine having kids in this environment? And tell them, like, you can't play in front of the house because there's a guy squatting a deuce by yeah. the camper over there. Like, uh, LA's uh, everywhere's nuts. And, but, the, but, but it's not, a, but what people do is they make, they make you saying that political. So they make. Oh, you've been watching so, Fox News. So, so if I say, right. if I say to somebody, man, watch the, don't go on the subways at like after midnight, man, be careful. Well, what do you mean? It's fine. It's like, well, no, I know people that got uh, spit on, punched in the face, and attacked. And then there's no, you know, so then I have a friend who's a cop in New York and he's talking about the no cash bail and that's what's happening. So somebody could be assaulted on the, somebody could be assaulted at two o'clock in the afternoon on the L train. And then later on at six o'clock at night, they're back out on the street doing something. And when you say that you're going, they're going, oh dude, you're, what are you? And they're making it political. And it's like, no, I don't give a shit. What side, I don't give Doesn't a matter. fuck what side you're on. I want me and my children and the people I love safe. When we go to the, one of the greatest cities in the world to either go to a show and do something, I don't, and you're making it political political because you're in denial that that's the shit that's out there and that's really what it is you know it's you can't tell me when i see somebody get randomly shot in the head or stabbed to death like just hanging out outside of fao schwartz in manhattan that things are okay 
That guy now, in Brooklyn got stabbed. There was a video that came out like yeah. last night. By the way, if Adele was saying what you just said at a concert, <laughs> I'd go give her space. Yeah. Let her, let her finish. I her wish, but, hit the but, song in the but I wish a celebrity would come out and say, like, this is not political. I just saw that guy get mugged. Like, let's make this better. Yeah. Let's make the city better. Oh, you can guy, all agree on that. A guy. Right? If you can't agree on that, dude, then you're <laughs> fucked up. Well. We're fucked up because everything's <laughs> everything's politicized, and uh, that's the new world order. Yeah, yeah, because somebody would go, "What if the guy with no shirt at your door was a nice guy? What if he?" You know, no, if- it's just it's just a thing <laughs> that I a pattern that I figured out. First off, thirty eight year old father of three with a newborn goes to Indiana or somewhere to for his class reunion, shot and killed randomly in the street by a dude who was arrested 66 times before he put a bullet in this guy's head randomly. 66 times. Um, If only we knew. 66 times? The new, Dawes can find the story. It's there. After 11, aren't you like, lock this guy up? Yeah. Yes. Well, the new world there. The, the new world order is you're either Democrat or you're Republican, and we'll figure it out by what you're complaining about. And so, if you're complaining and or you wear your sunglasses on the top of your ball cap, that's the other way we can figure out if you're a Republican. But if you, <laughs> but if you're wearing a mask, we know who you are as well. So, if you are complaining about the border, and what you're saying is is this is a sovereign nation. It's a shit show. What the hell's going on at the border? All they're hearing is, oh, you're Republican, so fuck off. It's, so that's, and then you start complaining about crime, and they hear you're a Republican. And, and then you start complaining about COVID lockdowns and shutting schools, and they hear you're a Republican. And then you naively say, who cares what side you're on? Would you want your kids locked out of school for sure. a year and a half? But they just hear yeah, you're a Republican. Yeah. And you're going, don't you want border security too? Doesn't ever, or who wants homeless people living on the streets? Like, and I'm not hearing any of this. Shut uh, up. I'm hearing yeah. Republican, yeah. and you need to shut up. That's the new world order. And my thing is, is two things can be true at once. Maybe it is a Republican talking point, but it still means the border's a shit show, and we need to fix it. Right. Right. That dude that got shot in the head, he doesn't care what your political right. view is. He's dead. The guy was arrested 60... 60- do you have that, Dawson? It's 66, 66 t- times the guy was arrested. 66 times, yes. Before is, he just randomly executed this dude. That is such a failure on, on our society that 66 times somebody can go out. 66? Yes. All right, we'll take a break. Paul, hang out. We'll do some news right after this. Well, good news. It's O Rewards Member Appreciation Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Get the most out of your membership. Shop earn points, and get rewards sent right to your phone or email. If you're not an O Rewards member yet, sign up. It's quick and it's easy. You can do it online or in the store if you like. Just ask one of their professional parts people about joining O Rewards next time you visit, and you can start earning points on your first purchase. Sign up for both email and tax and get even more out of your membership. And right now, members receive two times three times, up to eight times O Rewards points on select purchases. Those bonus points can help you get to your next reward even faster. You receive a $5 reward for every 150 O Rewards points, and you can use your reward on your next in-store or online purchase. So don't miss O Rewards Member Appreciation Month now at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store and O'Reilly Auto Dot com. Paul Verzi in studio, dates all over the place in a podcast, The Verzi Effect as well. Also, um, a special streaming now on Netflix. You can watch it. It's been out for a year. Nocturnal Admissions. Enjoy that. Uh, enjoy that as well. Uh, you want to do a little news? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad Paul's here. He's a Giants fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, this whole Taylor Swift thing is just getting out of hand, right? So, but now I guess at the at the Giants game on Monday, they played a Taylor Swift ad on the jumbotron, and the whole stadium booed 
Yeah, that sounds like, right. Yeah, so I, I think football fans are now just getting over it. Are yeah, we, but are I we think done? That, that's also probably because like she was at a Jets game and like the Giants are uh, like, the, and yeah, and then the Chiefs. So the Giants are just like, oh, we so don't they, care. they're booing the Jets, not, not Taylor. <laughs> probably, I think that that would be part of it because there's such a rift between Jet and Giant fans. Yeah. So I think that that's that's what it is. But I do think the NFL fans are getting like enough. Yeah. The no. Giants were getting shellacked too. Oh, so. NFL's leaning yeah. in hard. That doesn't right? help. They have like a Taylor cameraman. <laughs> I have a more sociological approach to this Taylor Swift phenomenon. Um, I think it's dangerous because you see a lot of these girls and sadly men who hopefully are just trying to get laid. Right. Uh, hopefully. God That's willing. usually the case, though. Right? But you know, I'm a Swifty, and I follow her, and you know, if she says something on Instagram, it gets 10 billion views. And if she, we find out what kind of thermos she uses, her, the gonna shorts sell she was billion. wearing at the Jets game, like sold out next day. Right. That that's that's what I'm saying. Okay, we get it. Um, should you be living vicariously no. through another human being? And it, it, it's satiating. I think there's a lot of people sitting around going, here's where Taylor Swift's going now. Here's who she's dating. Here's what she's up to. Here's what she's wearing. But you're not doing anything. No. You're not out creating anything. You're not making hay while the sun shines. You're so yeah. satiated by following you're somebody. You're out talking about her. Yeah. Right. Who doesn't? Oh, I'm making a friendship bracelet. How far she, can that get you? She doesn't know you. I mean, look, it's about the same conversation I had with my son when he was 10 about Pokemon. I'm like, listen, <laughs> history's not going to be kind to this Pokemon decision. I was like, I like Pokemon. Well, be prepared oh, for me to be make... a little short-lived, yeah. Be prepared for me to throw this in your face every time you float a bad idea in your adult life. And you've got a lot of calories burnt on Pokemon. You will yeah. get nowhere with this. You know, and... But I'm saying the same thing. This, this is basically the adult female version of Pokemon for children. Chicks, you yeah. know what I mean? Like Taylor Swift is their pokey. It's their waste of time. And it costs a lot of money, too. Do you think that, because I, I think this, and I think with the attention, do you think that this is one of, I think this might be one of the dumbest times in history. I think people are, I honestly, like the fact that, why do you think these clips and these reels a minute, right? Remember, so like, short. remember Vine. Nobody. What? Some great comedy specials. Great comedy specials. And and I, and you get the data from Netflix. They're turned off. Some are turned off in ten minutes. Some are turned. One of the best. And I, and I'm not saying this to pat myself on the back, but it made me feel good. Is one of the things was when people are like when they click on your special, they're actually staying in and watching because I worked so hard for so long to do it. But it's not the case always. And a lot of times people go, ah, what's next? What's next? Yeah. so the fact that our minds just make a stop quickly. We're so fucking stupid. For you to talk about, people are talking about Taylor Swift in this country dating a football player. Like it's like the it, it, it's like Reagan getting shot in the stomach, dude. It, it's, <laughs> right. it's like the nutty. It's the craziest thing. Yeah. It's like it can't be like, oh, they're dating, cool. Now it's because every. I think that this is one of when has been when have we been dumber? No, we, well we've well have we been have, dumber? Well, we have to make a division between wise and dumb. You know what I mean? We're not wise at all. Like we we've rejected right. our elders. Okay. Every right. six year old bitch dresses like she's nineteen now. We hate mm. old people. Yeah. So yeah. we've essentially old people <laughs> possess something called wisdom. Yeah. And they would sort of pass that along and then you would imbibe that wisdom and then you would pass it on to the next generation. We downplay our wisdom too. But we we went to this thing where it's like eighteen to thirty four, that's the demo. That's the demo. Eighteen yeah. to thirty four, you need that young demo everyone everyone in tv is always talking about the demo i don't know what the fuck it means when i was 23 i couldn't afford a mercedes yeah i couldn't even afford yeah. top ram ramen i had like middle yeah. or bottom ramen i was like you have a lower <laughs> ramen i can't afford anything except the word top, top yeah, yeah yeah in it i'll go yeah, bottom bottom. <laughs> yeah. bottom ramen do you have it or am i making that up so now we've decided that People that were older, yeah. we have no time for them. Everything skews young. Every old person tries to act young. And that's why I have this phenomenon. Also, we have no brains anymore because we all left the farm and we sat in air-conditioned cubicles. The farm yeah. teaches you how to do shit. Otherwise, you lose an arm. That's right. how the farm works. Every every tactile thing that has to do with something has to do with hooking up 
a hitch or blade or a combine or something you can yeah. get sucked into and killed, you yeah. know? So we got really good at that. Now we're all in some sort of hypothetical digital world chasing our own truths. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Labeling actual news, fake news, and making up stories and kind of running with it in a kind of weird, semi retarded ether. Yeah. So I don't, but smart wise, our vocabularies better and our comprehension is better right. technology is better so yeah so maybe it's the wise yeah but like i i was doing this bit back in the day where i said i really started to see a turn in society with how popular like the the tiger king got because mm -hmm. when i started to see the the real infatuation with that because that wasn't trying to be fun that wasn't like borat Right, like that wasn't like you know a, a Sasha Baron. Like, it wasn't a prank. Those right. were real people that mm -hmm. like lived that life, and we were so people were just so into it. And like, I was like, is any part of this disgusting to anybody else? Oh yeah, I got another thought <laughs> regarding this. <though>. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we do think it's disgusting. <laughs> yes, we do. Here's the thing with insurance companies is my favorite <laughs> thing ever. These actuarial <laughs> tables for the birds. <laughs> No, here's what I think is now part of the Taylor Swift phenomenon, and it's going on, and it's another dangerous chapter, addendum to what we're talking about, which is we are scared to not be in on everything. So if you bring up the Tiger King, I got to watch the Tiger King because I don't want to be left out of the conversation. Everyone's talking about it. You better know what Taylor Swift is up to because you don't want to be shunned from the conversation. You better be up on whatever bullshit, COVID bullshit, gypsy shit, Fauci shoved up your ass 10 minutes ago. Otherwise, you're going to be shunned you're be out, from the yeah. group. So yeah. everyone wants to be in on the group. It was your greatest fear as a, as a member of society is to be shunned, is to be shunned. Now, you you go down the wrong road on COVID, you'll be shunned big time and removed from your job and thrown out of your place of work. That's that. But you don't know who Taylor Swift is, and you'll be sort of quietly shunned because you're not in on this conversation. You, you're not part of what's happening. Yeah. And that's what an old person would do. An old person wouldn't know who Taylor Swift was. Right. That's And you don't want to be labeled old, and you don't want to get shunned. So yeah. here we are. Yeah. And these goddamn insurance companies. <laughs> and and, and, and uh, what is it, like uh, ranch dressing sales went up because they saw her dip in her french fries? And I mean, that's, think about, you're going to the supermarket, dude, and you're going to get that ranch. Taylor was- She eats ranch? I eat ranch. Yeah, she, she was eating uh, her french oh, fries. Oh, oh, she, I saw this on TMZ. <laughs> She so Kraft came out with this product that was ketchup and ranch. I think was the story. Oh, okay. It was like a fifty-fifty ketchup like ranch together, together. Because <laughs> no one wants to burn the calories of having to lift your hand <laughs> from one container of ranch and move it three quarters of an inch over and hit the ketchup. That's yeah. a that that yeah, you'll tear that? a rotator cuff through that. That's a calorie burner. And we're in the business of getting fat. You know, we don't want to burn calories trying to get fat. So I think Kraft, I think this story Heinz, yeah. was, or Heinz, Heinz reintroduced their, what are we calling it? Seemingly ranch. Yeah, it's, it's ketchup and ranch, right? Yeah. And they put like a new tag on it. They already had it for a couple of years, but it wasn't moving. And when they saw Taylor Swift with it, they, they quickly relabeled and shoved it out there. Yeah. That's well, they, they did it. They've put a Photoshop bottle of the dressing with a red label with the words Tay plus Trav on it. <laughs> oh, no. Which yes. kind of show? Corporate America are the biggest whores on the planet. <laughs> yeah. They will jump in God, on how quick anything. Too. How quick did that meeting happen? Like, oh, my how God. How quick? That happened Emergency like, meeting. during at the, yeah. <laughs> at the game. Oh, the guys whose business is running AIDS hospices going, what, what are we doing with Taylor Swift? <laughs> uh, we're waiting to die. We got to jump. Come on now. Start spitballing. <laughs> we got to work ideas. something. I need ideas. Taylor oh. Swift earns. You got to earn your way. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm just talking, but this is getting away from us here, people. <laughs> How old is she? 27? No. I mean, who knows? She's got to be. God damn it. She better be 30. 33. Oh, thank God. Okay. All right. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. So at least it's not. All right. That make, does make me feel. That helps, right? Yeah. If society was going He's like, if it was like 24 year old. Okay. 33. She did make some good hits. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Like, <laughs> I want to take my daughter to the concert because I like the songs. But this is getting. You know, right. But yeah. everyone 
half the people are at the concert because they like the songs, and the other half are there because they don't want to be left out right. of the conversation. Yeah. The, right. uh, yeah. The sick, the $6,000. That's why every blowhard celebrity who goes to one has to do the selfie with them and whatever B-list celebs is next to them. Oh, you know the person? I don't know if we ever found this, but maybe I, I can just, that picture. Who was the picture of? Lin-Manuel Miranda. Oh, I felt so bad for Molly Ringwald. I was, I was no, wa- Shannon. Hmm? It was Shannon, wasn't it? Molly Shannon? Yeah, is that who you told me it was? No. Oh, okay. Molly Ringwald. I wouldn't have felt as bad for Molly Shannon. Okay. They were doing all this, like, all the celebrities are showing up, you know, the Entertainment Tonight shows, you know, yeah, they're yeah, all yeah. showing up at the Swifty concerts, all of them, and they're showing all the shots of all the, you know, the Jonas Brothers and all the other jackoffs out there, and they show <laughs> Lynn manuel Miranda, right? But he's got his arm around Molly Ringwald, who was about the biggest star around in 1985. This is the Hamilton right? dude. Yeah, the yeah, Hamilton, Hamilton dude. dude. Okay. Right. But he's got his arm around Molly, Molly Ringwald, Ringwald, but they're like, Lynn Manuel's at the concert, too. And they left the oh, other. They're doing the montage of all the celebrities and like, oh, yeah, Lynn Manuel. Oh, that's right. Right. Cool. But you, half the time, there's someone else in the picture, but they're a civilian. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's not the woman who was, you know, in Pretty in Pink and Breakfast Club and uh, on the cover of Life magazine in like 1983 the and Time magazine. Of, of oh, wait, wait. We found, how the hell did we find that picture? Well, that you doesn't look told like me her, Molly though. Shannon. I did not say Molly Shannon. I, why would I write down Molly Shannon then when, when you told me? And I was looking for a picture of Lynn manuel and Molly Shannon. That does not look like Molly no, Ringwald. No, you wrote down Molly Shannon. I said Molly Ringwald. You can make mistakes. So can you. I know. It's just my batting average is way <laughs> fucking higher than yours. And I didn't say Molly Shannon this time. I would have said All Molly right. Shannon this time if I was that screwing I that Molly up. Shannon. I well, never, you think, have your I own never think about Molly Shannon. I know. You just heard Molly and you wrote Molly Shannon down instead of Molly yeah. Ringwald. Right. But the point is, is she took the selfie with him and Billy Bush left her out of the picture. And she's as prominent as he is. Yeah. And I'm just saying that's got a smart oh. if you're Molly Ringwald. Oh, dude, and Molly yeah. Shannon would have killed herself. Yeah. I mean. Oh, bummer. <laughs> yeah. My, that, dude, that's brutal to do to her, though. That's like... She's an iconic '80s actress, like yes, you know, teen star. And Household name. Did they treat? And her like if a- you're Billy Bush, you get to get two celebrities yeah. in your. Here's all the celebrities that were showing up, but he just did the Molly Ringwald. If it was Molly Shannon, they would know. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> who's more who's more relevant, Molly Shannon or Molly Ringwald? <laughs> I'm biased because the, the the Ringwalds grew up up the street from me Is when that I right? was a kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Bob Ringwald, the dad. Adele is the mom. Wow. Kelly's the son. Beth is the daughter, the other sister. And they had a little son who I think died when he was like three or four or she, something. She's the only one in the tragic. business. She's been, she was the only one in show business. Well, it's kind of weird and sad because they moved out here from up north for Beth's career, the sister's career. Oh. And she was the beautiful blonde who was going to come to Hollywood, and it didn't really work out for her. Uh, the son wanted nothing to do with, with showbiz, and uh, it ended up working out for Molly. That's the that's the story. Oh, you know Beth hates her. <laughs> Beth. <laughs> I never really asked, but yeah, there's got to be. There's got to be feelings. yeah. Listen, yeah. She goes in for an audition. She goes, no, how about, no, that was okay. How about your sister? Yeah. That's, that's, that's gotta yeah. be, too. That's, yeah. Well, I, that? yeah, she didn't, you know, took her a minute, but started getting little roles. Ended up in the stage uh, presentation of Annie. as like one of the orphans. Oh, okay. That was Molly. Then it just kind of took off. Yeah. From there, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, speaking of sports, though, uh, Michael Jordan also in the news. So, he has become the first athlete to rank among America's 400 wealthiest people. So, he is a part of the Forbes 400 mm. at number 379 after selling his majority stake of the Charlotte Hornets last year. Mm. He is estimated to have a net worth of $3 billion. I like him because he drinks and smokes a cigar on camera. 
Yeah, like it doesn't most hide guys it. are out cheating, sneaking puffs, and you know, putting the putting yeah. the cocktail in the tumbler that's unmarked oh. or something. He's got a brandy snifter and a big old Cuban. <laughs> no, and apparently he's like, the I'm word on the street rich. is Jordan. Jordan goes hard. Yeah, <laughs> Jordan goes hard. Like he's on yachts, just throwing tequila down. He, you know, he's. Oh. But I would have thought he made that list earlier. I can't believe I would it, just so took, it just took him now with well, the Hornets. But I thought with the. I well, he became a billionaire million in twenty fifteen. You beca- because oh, of Nike. Wow, I thought with all the shoes, it would have been, think. you know. Yeah, well, in 2010, he bought he bought the Hornets for like 245 or something. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, and then last year sold it for almost $3 billion, So that Yeah, sports franchise. What would you do it's, with $500 million, dude? Like, $500 million, it's like, you can't, you can't fuck that up. Well, I mean, Mike Tyson did like 300 I think. Challenge accepted. But, well, yeah. did, does Michael Jordan, does he still have that big gambling problem? Is, is he still, I mean... I mean, that'd be, be a pretty big game. It'd be a nice stick. <laughs> you can't fuck, I mean. Well, I mean, the problem with gambling is it's not about the money. It's about how much it stings. The thrill. Yeah. When, when you lose. And so he can't. Yeah. He can't play hundred dollar hands of blackjack or whatever. He can't do it because there's nothing. There's why why gamble? Yeah. It's not worth gambling. Yeah, anymore. It, it's you, the rush of uh, Barkley was talking about that. How he's like the, because when you're in the NBA and you're in a playoff game or you're in the finals, that's like a rush. Now you don't have that anymore. Now you're just sitting there, you're doing commentary. But having 500k on a hand in blackjack, it's got to give you something. Yeah, and it's also it's got to <laughs> it's got to affect you in your tax bracket. Like when I back in the day when I was poor, we'd have like gambling nights every once in a while, and like everyone would just empty out their change bucket you know what i mean and like show up with like 13 dollars worth of change if i walked out of there without my 13 dollars it was fucking devastating you know what i mean when i was in college i took my book money to the casino like and and we lost it you know and i had to call back it was devastating (laughs) yeah it's devastating (laughs) right so it's got to sting if it doesn't sting then what are you doing right you know what i mean you don't play russian roulette with a squirt gun Right, right. It's gotta hurt. It's gotta hurt. <laughs> I remember I had this. I had this friend. I had this friend, and he won three hundred dollars in roulette. And he goes, "Paul, we got to get out of here, man. We got to get out of here." I got three hundred. He was so because a college kid that's a freshman going to college, you get three hundred bucks. You're good for him. Right. I mean, you're on campus. You're good. You're eating extra. You got everything, yeah. right? And I was fighting the blackjack table, and he couldn't wait any longer. So he threw a, one of his hundreds on red and lost. And then he goes, Paul, you got to hurry up. And by the, <laughs> by the end, he lost it all. Uh-huh. And I'll never forget, we're walking towards the door, and he just took his hat off his head. And he just goes, fuck, he throws yeah. it. And he's like having a meltdown at the entrance or exit uh. of this casino because I took long. But I was like, dude, you should have just put it in your pocket. You know, yeah. but yeah, but like, you know, Jordan needs that. For Jordan, that's got to be like a, mil- a two million a hand. Yeah, it's got to, it's, it's baked in. It just has to sting. And look, if you make. Forty-one thousand dollars a year as a school teacher. There's a number for you at yeah. that table, and if yeah. you if you make Bill Gates money, there's also a number. It's just a different number, <laughs> but there's a number. And if you're like me, bringing your change bucket over to Ralph's house, then that's a different number than the school teacher. But it's a it's a number, and that's how gambling works. All right, uh, let, let me give Paul a plug here. Uh, I'll spell it out, Paul. Verzi, V-I-R-Z-I dot com, because he's doing shows coming up in San Diego, and he's got Hartford, Connecticut, he's got Philadelphia as well. So go on out and support. Yeah, yes. and I, we just announced I'm going to be at the Gramercy Theater in New York City on New Year's Eve. And I, I usually never like to leave the house on New Year's Eve. I want to be with my kids. But we're going to do the Gramercy, and uh, that's December 31st, 8 o'clock. Tickets are on sale now, so I'm excited to do that in New York uh, awesome. for the first time on New Year's. I'm not a New Year's. Are you a New Year's go-out guy? I'm not. I'm not, but. No, but, but I've done a lot of shows live. on New Year's, yeah. so. Well, yeah. It's yeah. a good time. to. I mean, it's a good way to get paid. Yeah. Not that you don't. It's for the art, but I mean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Irvine, uh, that's going to be October 11th. That'll be me and Brad Williams and Adam Ray out there as well. And then Cobb, San Francisco, October 12th and, uh, sorry, 13th and 14th. San Fran Four shows there. And let's see, Matthew Lillard. Go to questsandwhiskey.com. Until next time, it's Adam for Paul and Max Apata and Matthew saying. Mahalo.